All right. Why are we reversed? I don't it's not know. usually like this, is it? I don't know. Hmm. <laughs> well, That's okay. We're, we're live now. <laughs> this is distracting. I've never seen it like this. Welcome to the live, everybody. So today, yeah, we're going to be hanging out, answering your questions. I want to help you as much as I can with, uh, you know, anything health and nutrition related, vegan related, you know, even maybe some relationship stuff. I think we're pretty good at that as well. So, uh, you guys already know, but I'm Derek from SimNet Nutrition and I'm a holistic nutritionist, but you know, I also love working out in the gym, calisthenics, being outside in nature, cooking, of course. And uh, this is my girlfriend, partner, Crystal. And uh, tell us about yourself, Crystal. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'll put you on the slide. Well, hey, you used, to be a, you used to be a practical nurse. Yeah. And you studied women's health for a good while. Mm -hmm. and But you know a lot about just general health mm -hmm. because she reads a lot. Very smart. Mm. and um yeah and you know all the things thanks babe. You know, all the good things to help people so yeah i like to uh i like how you think i'm smart because i read a lot but i like to read a lot of um like non-fiction kind of no wait is it fiction it's fiction when it's not real right? yeah i think yeah. so yeah i like to read a lot of fiction books but sometimes non-fiction sometimes non-fiction i always get those confused Anyways, welcome everyone. I'd uh, love to see you guys in the chat. Just say hello. Let me know where you're from, if you have any questions and uh, all of that. So, yeah. Peter asked if we're excited for the vegan camp out. Um, I think so. We still need to kind of <laughs> yeah, get that are. all. Uh, well, we still need to get it all in line. We haven't really, um, like I'm waiting on my passport because my passport was going to expire later this year. So I didn't want to travel um and then that happened so um mm -hmm. i'm waiting for my passport to come and then we're going to start booking things and i think what we're going to do is we're going to go to the uk a little bit early spend some time in some areas that we enjoy go to the vegan camp out and then maybe travel into other parts of europe i, I don't know we need to still plan that but we'll see Yo, I have to say, if you got like, I don't know what it is about this being backwards, but it is throwing me off of my <laughs> face. Weird. Yeah, you're like, oh, is this I'm what ugly. <laughs> is this what I look like to people? Like, cause this, I look like a Picasso drawing. Like, my everything is just like all jumbled up. Anyways, our house looks uh, interesting too. Yeah. So, uh, Barcelona, cool. I've I always I used to skateboard like way back in the day, and uh, I still do sometimes, but I'm not very good. But I always wanted to go to Barcelona because, as you know. Uh, if you live there, it's like one of the main hubs of skateboarding. Anyways, uh, let's get into some questions. Okay. Just uh, just uh, discovered you guys a couple of weeks ago. Still trying to catch up for years of joy, encouragement, and fun. New York. Yeah, we have some good archived videos. Like sometimes I look back on them. I'm like, man, these these are good. How do I top these? You know, but we try. Uh, we try. Uh, greetings from Mexico. Vancouver, BC. Nice. Got someone local. Wasaga Beach, Canada. I mean, I spent some weekends in Wasaga Beach. That was good. Okay. Um, we got our first question. Sorry about that. Our cat just jumped from extreme height onto the table. <laughs> uh, does a vegan need to take any supplements like vitamin D or B12? Yeah, those are the two I would suggest that you definitely consider taking. If you're just starting out going vegan, something I always like to suggest is or if you're making any big changes to your diet is get your blood tested mm. first before a lot of people are like, I'm going to go vegan, you know, and then like six months down the road, they get their blood tested and they're like, Oh, vitamin B12 deficient is the vegan diet, but you don't know. Like, you, and, and also if you start supplementing, you want to know that it's working as well. Right. Yes. Uh, and the amount that you're taking is a good amount. So it's always a good idea to get blood tested first. And then, uh, yes, I would sec suggest supplementing vitamin uh, B12 and D3 and maybe consider uh, omega threes as well. But yeah, those are the those are the big ones. Mm -hmm. 2000 I use. Uh, well, depends where you live. If you get lots of sun, it's sunny and, you know, you're outside a lot. Maybe not as much, but at least 2000 I use vitamin D3 per day and uh, 300 micrograms of B12 uh, or so a day. Maybe even more if you're older. Um, uh, what about vegan omega-3s? Somebody asked. Yeah, so I think... I think it's probably a good idea to consider it. Uh, there's mm -hmm. a lot of different factors that are involved in us converting the parent omega-3 molecule ALA, which we get from flax, hemp, chia, and like a bit of in like walnut and leafy greens and that sort of thing, to EPA and DHA, which are the uh, elongated omega-3s that uh, we need for you know brain health and all sorts of other things. So uh, yeah, some of the factors include like age, Sex, genetics is a big one as well. So you just don't know how well you're converting that stuff. So it's always a good idea to, mm -hmm. uh, to yeah, consider supplementing it. 
And if you if you have a family history of like dementia or Alzheimer's or yes. any like brain um, like health related things, then it's always a good idea, no matter what, to maybe supplement omega three. Just because the science is like not very like concise, and so some um, of the doctors out there that kind of promote the plant based plant based diet, especially for brain health, mm -hmm. suggest supplementing omega threes, especially if there's like a family history of um, like brain issues, yeah, or health issues related to the brain. Yeah, I was a, I, I didn't for a long time. Um, yeah, we but then, survived. I don't yeah. even think I had omega threes when I was younger. Honestly, we never it had flax. No, like, no nutrients no, were a thing. It was just nutri calcium yeah. from milk. And we That's never had, had like to, and then, fish or anything. So no. I'm like, I don't even know how I got omega threes as like a child. But hey, we're it's here. <laughs> um. Anyway, yeah, yeah. So anyway, and I changed my tune on it, and I think that it's uh, something to definitely consider. All right. So somebody, Laura Miller asked, do you wear barefoot shoes and which ones do you like? I feel like we like planted these questions. They're like, <laughs> you know, they're like perfect. We're like, yes, we do. Yeah. Thanks for asking. Uh, but maybe I'll show uh, a couple that we wear because we're, we love footwear around here. Yes. And well, Derek is like a big shoe guy. He's got lots of shoes. Yeah. But, but not like a sneaker head where I have no, like a bunch no, of no, like no. Nike, you know. Just like kind of like cheaper, easy shoes to wear. Like his <laughs> Etnies scouts that he wore for a really mm -hmm. long time, but those aren't necessarily like barefoot shoes. Well, I'll keep talking. I'll show but you we, we um, we recently bought uh, Lems, which yeah. is a company I think based in Colorado. And uh, we were able to get them in Canada through um, a website called Soul, S-O-L-E, Freedom. .ca and they they carry a bunch of barefoot shoe options and so uh we really like vivo life shoes as well yep. they have great options those are like very barefoot derek will show these not made um, by the supplement company yeah not made so by let's show the lems first because you were talking about oh, those. okay so um, these are the lems so, oh. so we have a man that is so hard to do <laughs> So we uh, we actually both have a white and a black pair because you know you gotta have well there's a bit a of a story vibe. to it but let's not go <laughs> let's not go there somebody um, ordered the wrong size and then refused to take them back <laughs> and then s somebody inherited them so anyways we bought these because I originally wanted a pair because I wanted something that had a little bit more um, uh, like like a bit more cush yes they call it the stack height the stack height because mm. my Vivo Life's and a, a lot of Vivo Life shoes they do not or not Vivo Life, Vivo Barefoot. <laughs> now I'm confused. Yes, that's why That's why I was like, the I don't Vivo think it's the Vivo Barefoot same shoes are like very minimal. Like you feel rocks and everything when you're walking on them. I wanted a pair of these um, for the gym and for like hiking and mm -hmm. stuff that um, have a little bit more stack height because also as you get older, it's kind of nice to have a little bit of more of that. They're not cushiony cushion. no. by any means. They're not like soft cushion. Um, but, but they're they do very have, comfortable. They do have more than a shoe like this, although it's hard to tell because yeah. this sole kind of like wraps around. Uh, a little bit, but first, uh, what makes a barefoot shoe a barefoot shoe is generally they have uh, no drop from heel to toe. So mm -hmm. there's uh, that's that's the difference. A zero drop. Zero drop. So the difference of height uh, in the the stack height from heel to toe, and then also they have a very wide toe box so that your foot isn't all cramped in there like in <laughs> traditional shoes. It can actually like splay out, and which is really important for foot health. And yeah. as you know, you know everything kind of works together in our body, so that like transfers up. Uh, so and usually they're very low to the ground like usually they have a yes. very um small stack height compared to other runners like you know i have like a pair of ultras and they're like this mm -hmm. like the stack height's very high on them but they wouldn't be considered um, a barefoot shoe because there's no. zero drop but i wouldn't I don't think they would be considered a barefoot shoe no because they're not very close to, uh, to no. the ground but so i anyways. like these because i have uh <laughs> really wide feet and mm -hmm. um i actually find lems to be wider than um vivos so if you if you put them up like yeah, hard to they're, they're 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 I think they're like quite a bit wider. I was having issues when I when I in when I have two pairs of Vivo barefoot shoes and I was having issues with this area like um it kept opening up and like breaking basically. Mm. So it have like holes develop right here like pretty early on and that was because of like how wide my feet are and I haven't had any issues with that happening in my legs. Cuz your bunions. Um yeah, but my No, I'm <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> well, I have like really bony feet that are like wide. Anyways. So, yeah, and then I these are them. the these are the Vivo uh barefoot shoes which are uh, considerably more expensive like they're they're qu quite an expensive shoe I definitely had to yes. think about this one for a while but uh they are very well made like I've had no problems with them I wear them in the gym all the time as there's like a part fraying here but that's just the <laughs> where it's, anyways these are the um, more like a technical yeah uh vivos whereas I have a my vivo barefoots are um not as technical they don't have like such an aggressive tread mm -hmm. on them but, um, but the great they, gym shoes I mm -hmm. just you know you have to be careful with like running in them and stuff like that you have to really build up to it um, but they're both really good. So anyways, that's like the longest story ever on our barefoot shoes. Peter asks, do you guys, um, do you know about the Nanaimo vegan festival on July the 6th? They are looking for speakers. Oh, we haven't been asked to speak at that. Mm -hmm. Um, 
I don't know. We went last year and it was great. Yeah, it was really fun. Like uh, that was that was we'll... the one we went to, right? Where we got yeah. the soy curls. Yeah, I think we'll probably try to go this year. I just always like miss yeah, go. Um, like events like that for some reason. No, but we'll I'll, go like, again. See them. We'll go again. Um, man, I don't know. I get like nervous speaking at events. I'm like, I don't know what what am I like? People need to hear me speak. You gotta go on YouTube if you want to hear me speak. I speak way too much, but yeah, maybe. Mm. Um, it's always an interesting crowd too when you're like preaching to the converted. I don't know why, but like for me, like when I'm at the gym and people asking me about like you know nutrition and vegan stuff, I, I like know like I can like hit them with so many different things because these it's like brand new to them and they're just like what. But then when you're preaching, like not preaching, but talking to people that already know, <laughs> um, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's kind of, I don't know, difficult to kind of uh, find a, like a subject that I think everybody would be like interested in, but clearly there's lots of vegan talks and I've been to some before I've, we've heard, uh, um, anyways, we've heard lots of people speak. Have we heard earthly ed speak before? I don't think the so. Victoria? I don't think we've never no. been in, but no, we will no, this that year. Was the other guy, Jesse G says, what do you think about people using hydration additives with high levels of sodium? Mm -hmm. I think it depends on your training. Like, I think if you're doing like endurance kind of stuff, you kind of need it. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Th this whole like salt and water thing is like a really, it's sort of a, seems like a, it's a newer kind of thing. I mean, I know everyone always has, but it's always been like with like other, um, other electrolytes as well. But now it seems mm -hmm. to be like, it's like, just put Celtic salt in there and that's like good enough. And mm -hmm. I don't really know. I've never, I've never had an issue where I think that I, like where I've done anything like long distance enough where I mm -hmm. find myself like cramping up from like the, mm -hmm. from that. Um, yeah, I don't know. We do, we have like a product that we use sometimes if I find like I've been sweating a lot or doing a lot of activities. I, just that, like the, I like the taste of it. Yeah. It's, like the, it's just an electrolyte. It's like, it kind of makes your um, water just go down a little easier. Yeah. It's it makes not it even, like, it doesn't even have a taste though. It's no, just, <laughs> makes it a bit like thicker almost. Yeah. Uh, like, but it's uh, <laughs> from desalinated inland sea water. It's from a brand called elite. It's uh, pretty cool. It's like not, mm -hmm. there's no like flavoring or additives or anything to it. Mm -hmm. And it's uh has a good uh, amount of like uh, sodium, potassium, magnesium, uh, and some other electrolytes as well. But um, I think if you're doing like really like you're sweating a lot, mm -hmm. doing really like intense, like very like you're just sweating your bag off, then it would be good. Like even hot yoga, I think mm -hmm. um, like a really hot yoga session, you could like have a little bit of like an electrolyte in your water after. Um, but yeah, it, I think it would be more for like an endurance thing. Yeah. Uh, Flax has a lot of omega-3 though, someone said. We're making an instant pot meal if you can hear the <laughs> beeping. It's not our... I think it should turn off. Yeah, it should. Flex has a lot ALA, of yes. which depending on your conversion rates, yeah, you could probably get enough omega-3 from that. How much you need to eat kind of like just depends. Um, but omega-3 supplement is always like a good insurance policy. Mm -hmm. That's kind of what we say. <clears throat> but flax is definitely the king mm -hmm. of omega-3s. And then there's walnut, chia, and hemp as yeah. well. Chia is all, the, would be below flax, I would say, as far as mm -hmm. being a good quality. Mm -hmm. But you got to grind. <clears throat> flax obviously yes. and, and it's probably good to grind chia as probably well good to, to grind chia that. unless it's really well soaked and you're chewing it yeah <clears throat> um not to beat a dead horse but how much protein do we really need mm -hmm. well it depends so oh, no. um who was it dr gregor put up a video recently but anyways it was like people were everyone's getting too much protein basically is, is what he came to conclude that you know like we don't need to be obsessed with having all this protein. I think that's probably true for like, just like living. I don't think we need as much protein as, as people obsess about. And I think most people probably are getting enough. Uh, but I think what is, what is it? Uh, 1.7 grams per kilogram of body weight is like sort of the upper uh, limit to how much is effective for building muscle and for athletes and like uh, muscle protein mm. synthesis and that sort of thing. It's 1.7, it's kilograms, right? I always get, cause we have in Canada, we have to use so many different, uh, like, you know, we have to use the metric system sometimes and then the Imperial system sometimes. So It'd be like 1.6 grams per kilogram. 1.6. That would be like the upper limit. I think th like 1.6, 1.7 is somewhere around there. I'm going to do 1.7 mm -hmm. times, uh, my weight, which is what, okay. Anyways, yeah, it's right around there. So this like whole gram per pound of body weight for it's for natural lifters, I don't I don't think that it's going to benefit you uh, to eat that much. But as far as like uh, just surviving, I think I've heard as low as what's 0. 0.7 grams per kilogram mm -hmm. of body weight, and and that's like enough for health and whatever. But I don't know. I like to eat a bit more than that. 
Um, someone asks, hello there, are you watching Brian Johnson's videos? If so, what do you think of him and his endeavors? Mm. It's funny because we were just talking about him um, yesterday. Yes. Um, oh, I mean, he can do whatever he wants. <laughs> I, like, I don't know. I, I, I think, like yeah, him. <laughs> it's I, li I like He's him. He's just doing his thing. I mean, if you if we all had all the money in the world, yeah, that's the why thing. wouldn't you want to biohack your body? When you, you got know? time and money. Yeah, uh, it's just. It doesn't, what people do. it doesn't seem like the, I don't know. I don't want to say anything like negative, you know, about him. I think genetics play a lot, a huge role in how people like look yes, and, and age, and age and right? Like, um, cause everybody, you know, you know, somebody who like, you know, smokes and doesn't live a healthy life and they like look really young. It doesn't, that's, that's or the look outlier. To 100 and you're yeah. like, dang. And of then course, you that's know like, people that are healthy and then don't live that long. Yeah. So I you know he gets a lot of, a lot of hate for like how he looks. Right. And uh, or not how he, I, I, he's not like a bad looking guy, but like, he doesn't look like someone that might be on the quest that he's on. I don't know how to put it like nicely, but, uh, or spending the money that he is or whatever. But I think he's finding out some pretty cool information and I, I don't know. He seems to handle the hate really well, which is what I really like about him. I don't know. I, I don't have too much to say about him. Uh, but he, mm -hmm. yeah, it's, it's interesting. I'm glad that someone's doing the, the research yeah. that he is, but it's hard especially when he's doing so many things at once. Like he's taking, I saw he took like a, it was like 110 pills or something in a day. How are you going to know what's, what is yeah. working and what's not working, you know? And so mm. I, I don't know how that's going to all work. And in the end. you know, it's a little bit unattainable, I think for the average person. So whatever benefits he does receive, mm -hmm. it's going to, it's kind of like, Oh, okay. Well that's, that's great. If you can, you know, have the money and the time to like do that. Mo most of us don't. Right. So it's kind of hard to be like, um, super stoked on like what he discovers because it's like oh we probably won't be able to do it ever yeah take and i on think those things, so the craziest whatever. thing he snacks on like uh at night we were saying snacks oh he on has um super dark chocolate and, and olive like oil. olive oil so he like kind of like mitigates like the, any blood sugar spike but mm. i'm like that wouldn't even be like fun like i don't know i want life to be fun <laughs> and maybe he does find that enjoyable to eat but i i wouldn't um but yeah, good for him. Oh, yeah, wow, he's just doing his thing. I love and I, I think we all just appreciate when people just do their thing and put themselves out there because it, it can be hard with um you know criticism or whatever, but he's just like living it. It's cool. Uh someone said start any tips for starting out in barefoot shoes. Yeah, take it slow because you mm -hmm. can really uh, mm -hmm. hurt yourself. We should have said that at the beginning. So thanks for the reminder. Yes. Uh you can injure your uh what the your the calves, your calves well, get like so like yeah. super tight and sore. You'll notice that. Yeah, because you're not you're not running on your uh, heel, like you're not striking on your heel. You, if you forces you to strike on like your midfoot or your toes, we're not just your toe. You're not running around tippy toes, but <laughs> like, you know, <laughs> on your sometimes I do. Uh, so that's yeah, that's the big thing. Uh, you just want to like start really yeah. slow and then have you know other shoes that you run in as well. Start maybe yeah. just like um, you know, like I'm talking like around the block like a couple times before yeah. you start doing then like a kilometer or mile or whatever. The lems I think would be like an easy mm -hmm. shoe to transition to because they do have a little bit more of a stack height than say a vivo shoe the vivo mm -hmm. barefoot shoes mm -hmm. um yeah i don't i think it really depends on what um you're looking to do in them in order to transition oh my gosh so many good out. questions appreciate all of you being here and like hanging out with us this is always so fun um let's let's see let's see here uh thank you for your amazing content you're welcome what are your thoughts on zero shoes? They have a sale right now. I have never, I haven't had a pair. Yeah, that's uh, um, a little, well, I found that the shipping was a little bit expensive to get here. It's not that expensive, but if you can get like free shipping, that's like the best, but yeah. it's not. And then I think zero ships from the US. So returns would be a little bit more mm. annoying. And that's something that we have to be considerate of. It's hard to find um, that. I should look on that other website. But yeah, once we found the limbs, I was like, I'm into that. Um, yeah. Yeah. But you I could try I, them. Derek wanted a pair of uh, zero hiking boots, actually. Yeah. You were looking online. Um, yeah, something with a little ankle support. Uh, anyways, we I haven't think, tried them, so we can't say. Yeah, I can't say. But sure I, similar. I think they're probably, yeah, pretty great. Uh, is it true that that vegan protein food is less digestive than animal based? I I don't know. Me, like it depends on like what food I guess and mm -hmm. what you're comparing it to. But I think like the, uh, you know I I don't know. I don't want to like maybe slightly, but I don't think it's like a big factor. I I don't you know I don't really see it. But I don't know. I don't know what to say about that one. Um, 
Like, are they talking about the digestibility? Like, yeah, the score digestibility or score or whatever. So, I, I don't know. I don't pay much attention to it because it's like I know I'm gonna eat this way. I know I'm gonna like. <laughs> I know I'm eating enough calories. Yeah, I know like, that I, I haven't like, had I any like great. problems, like you know, gaining muscle or energy or anything like that. So, yeah, for me, not a big factor, even if it is slightly less. Uh, you had maybe some like digestion. gastrointestinal issues where it was like hard to uh, digest like fiber rich kind of foods. You maybe know, maybe a bigger which, factor. Yeah, which is you know, kind mm-hmm. of a small subset of people oh this is a good one what are your thoughts on chlorella natural b12 chlorella. <laughs> and, <laughs> and spirulina uh so i wouldn't rely on either of those for a b for a source Mm-mm. of b12 uh because they are up, apparently b12 like analog so it like they, it looks like b12 to mm. your body and uh and i don't think that's in chlorella as much as it is in spirulina i think it's in spirulina that that one is. and I, I don't know the then the num the amount is going to vary depending on you know, how it's grown and uh, that sort of, th- yeah, I guess be grown uh, and that sort of thing. So I like, I like chlorella. Um, I think spirulina, I like spirulina too. I had it for like a really long time, but uh, apparently there, there's worries with like the, what is it? Like the endotoxins or something like that in it? It, it depends or, on how it's grown mm-hmm. and all that kind of stuff. You yeah. have to be conscious of where you're sourcing it, which right. is like anything, I think. Yeah. But I think, um, from the people that I trust who are like the, you know, the researchers and stuff, chlorella is better than spirulina if you're going to be adding it to a smoothie. Someone is mentioned peanut butter runner, which I love. If I, if I like run, I, w- I would be like just running off peanut butter too. Um, I'm in Rome for the marathon tomorrow. Well, congratulations. Hopefully the marathon goes well. And they say that they're watching us talk about <laughs> our barefoot shoes and they, they're like, I have an insane stack height, yeah. carbon plated race shoes. So if you're running marathons and like long distances, you're going to have to figure out what's, what's the best kind of shoe for you. Mm-hmm. I would probably go with something with like a higher stack height for comfort. Yes. And just because wear and tear in your body too, like hitting the pavement and stuff with like a barefoot shoe is hard. Of course. And so, then a carbon. So don't like, like, uh, yeah, yeah, we're not judging and then, like, anyone. <laughs> and then something like that gives you some rebound in the yeah, shoes. Obviously, yeah, yeah it's going to help you run like faster and longer. I'm not out there to set any times. I just want to like feel yeah, good just and, just, and just run around. Um, we're not even running. I haven't really, I don't know. Really what are you talking about? I just got back from a run yeah, today. Okay, so don't yeah. try and put me on blast like I don't run. I just got back. <laughs> I'm just saying I don't run. So I'm not trying to compare my barefoot journey yeah. or barefoot shoe journey to like someone running marathon. But yeah, definitely. You don't see like uh, Iliad Kipchoge, the guy who's running like the sub yeah, not, two hour marathon. Not, 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 He's not in vivo barefoot shoes. <laughs> um, Maybe for certain training days. Yeah. There's uh, pros and cons. So um, yeah, somebody asked about deodorant and toothpaste. Yeah, we're big into like natural and holistic uh, health products around here too, because what we put on our skin, you know, is absorbed into our body for the most part. So yeah, um, Somebody asked, uh, toothpaste, I used rock salt and earth paste since 2007, but, oh, thanks to you two. Cool. Uh, still use earth paste, but have switched from crystal because of the ingredient struggling to find a new one. Oh, hmm. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, so as far as deodorant goes, I found one recently. I don't want to show anybody cause it's so hard to friggin it's, find, yeah. but, uh, I, there's one that I found here. Entertain them. For a second. It's, <laughs> it's called, it's by a company called Hey Humans. Um, and it smells really good and the ingredients are pretty good and then it's like fully okay. recyclable but unfortunately i don't even think the company like makes it anymore or i don't whatever. know yeah they've been really hard to find but this is hey humans i always thought it said hummus for some reason yeah um and then you open it and there's not a lot left no there's none left. but it like pushes up no there's none look oh, how there's much like left. No left it's oh, like no, no. A, it's like a little it's uh, like a little a disc little di- and then you could like recycle that anyways derek's a, a obsessed with it, it and I tried to find so it good. online and you can't, I yeah. don't know. So anyways, it does smell really good. If you, if, if you find any, send it to my PO box. Yeah, Derek, I'll pay I you. was even looking on like US site. I'm like, babe, I don't um, know. But that one really good. Like I can uh, use that. And then let's say I forget the shower for like a day or two. <laughs> Fine. Like it's amazing. Um, and then this one as well is one that I've used for quite a while. The laughs. Oh, now it's backwards. <laughs> that was a magic trick. It's laughs this one's stick. okay. Yeah, and this one works pretty well too, I would say. Uh, and it smells great. It yeah, it definitely keeps the body odor away. And then we just recently bought this recently one. Recently got um, this because one because we couldn't find the hay humans. And then this is also like a stick, and it's called decode. Decode. Um, yeah. And it smells similar, and I think it works similarly. Yeah, and this one's interesting because it has a um, it has some sort of what was it like an enzyme or a yeah, like an enzyme in it to help with. Um, the heck how many sides is this uh, thing saccharomyces have? Oh, okay. ferment 
Yeah. So uh, yeah, it's like a um, like a probiotic in there. So maybe that uh, you know they've probably done some sort of research on it because what was it? It was it's clinically proven. But yeah, this one seemed like it was a pretty decent one as well. And anyways, uh, pretty also pretty good. Uh, and I've tried a lot of different uh, natural deodorants, but yeah, definitely this Hey Humans one if you can find it, um, by far the best. And I think they must have like a few different scents. This one's kind of more manly-ish, but you know, good for everyone. Yeah. But that keeps the smell at bay, let me tell you. <laughs> but these are a little bit more, um, have a little bit more ingredients than just like a crystal. Holy crap, um, look how many ingredients are in that one. I just Yeah, but this one has like some oils and then there's like um, obviously essential oil mix. Oh yeah, like no, that. those aren't bad. Yeah, this is like a very typical natural. But yeah, boy, could you imagine coming up with a formula? Like, yeah, like how many ingredients are in there? Um, <laughs> You're like my brain. <laughs> So, uh, well, oh, what's in the Instant Pot, someone asked. Uh, Crystal. Oh, let me tell you. Uh, it's a split pea soup, mm. which my friend sent me the recipe, and I make it all the time. It's, mm. I'm obsessed with it. And I use yellow split peas because they're the bomb. And then it's like potatoes and carrots, smoked paprika, like some herbs in there. Thyme, which is a big thing. Thyme, mm, like, the, like the herb thyme. So delicious. And then uh, maybe a little bit of a cheeky liquid smoke is in there. <laughs> Nice. <laughs> but it's like, it's so good. Very and then good. when you cook it down the Instant Pot, the split peas kind of like break up and it becomes more um, like it's, a thicker, it thickens a it, thicker yeah. yeah, like thickens it. It's delicious. It's like very comforting. Um, we're going to go for, I think, like a bike ride today. So I just wanted to have something um, uh, like ready for when we got home and it smells really good already. So somebody asked if we would recommend an Instant Pot. Yes. Yeah. Definitely. If you have amazing. a room. Amazing. Definitely. It's uh, yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Like Great it is, time saving appliance. Yeah. Because you just set it and forget it you just like you know go on yeah. with your day um and it's a really healthy way to cook uh because you don't you know you're not like if when you like boiling stuff and stuff mm -hmm. some of the nutrients like leach out uh it's good at helping to reduce like the um like the anti-nutrients that everyone's worried about like phytates lectins that sort of thing in there um oh, yeah. what else uh yeah and just really flavorful dishes and you can get so creative with it so yeah i definitely would recommend an instant pot and maybe yeah, we got real. We got the really small one when we first uh, got one, and we found it to be like we were just filling it up all the time because yeah. it's nice if you're gonna put in the effort, which isn't much, but you might as well make like a whole bunch of food, and then uh, you know you have some for the next few days. Uh, it's gonna be in a video actually we were gonna do this weekend, but then I was like kind of I wasn't sure if there was enough good like content in it, so I was like, ah, let's grab this idea, and so that's we'll why we're doing. There. But that's why we're doing the live. But I love doing these anyway. So Phoenix out. Rising asks. Is soy bad for thyroid? Heading for thyroid issues, is soy okay to eat? Mm. I think it depends on like your iodine intake because goitrogenic foods like soy and cruciferous vegetables, if you're eating like a lot of them and then you don't have enough iodine in mm -hmm. your diet. Um, and I'm talking like a lot, right? It's not like one serving of soy is going to be too much. But when you're having that plus like broccoli, cauliflower, um, Brussels sprouts, like the bulk of your diet kind of thing. And then not having a lot of iodine. I think that's when things can get a little bit mm -hmm. like, okay, maybe the thyroid's not super happy. So make sure you have a good iodine source. If you're already having issues, probably good to talk to your doctor to see like Thank what you. the thyroid issue is. Um, cause maybe iodine is not the issue, but, um, I think that's like a thing to watch out for. Mm -hmm. uh, iodine is very important. Yes. Yeah, we actually both take a, an iodine supplement. I often forget to kind of mention that, but it's just like a – because we don't eat a ton of sea vegetables. I like them, like sprinkle them on food, but you know, as far as like the amount that I eat is yeah. not very much. Chris does not like them. so No, I don't like any um, like like seaweed. Blah, and like then we I use, can't. I don't even – yeah, so I, I for sure take like an iodine supplement. We use a bit of iodized salt. Sorry. We use a bit of iodized salt, oh, yes. but not a, not a not ton. Enough. So um, – that's just like an us problem though. Like if you yeah. have like seaweed and stuff in your diet, you probably don't have to worry. Don't get me it, wrong. We, we salt our food. Like we add like, you know, tamari and soy sauce. Oh yeah. And but it's not. Miso and, <laughs> yeah. and, and then like, you know, <laughs> like pink salt or like Celtic salt. But so that's like sometimes not, it's just, but we do have okay. iodized salt, nothing against it. Uh, but yeah. The, so it's yeah. Uh, like, they make like these uh, concentrated iodine um, supplements that are, it's just concentrated down from kelp. Kelp. Thank you. How do you feel about sea moss gel? We've never actually had it. I've heard a lot about yeah. it, but I've also heard it's kind of gross. So mm -hmm. we've, I've never bought it. It's also very expensive, mm -hmm. uh, or at least what I've seen mm -hmm. when it's like pre-made. I know you can get like the stuff and make it yourself, but it's not something I've ever gravitated towards trying. No, but I, yes. Yeah, it would be interesting to try. Maybe we, maybe we should do a little taste test or something. Yeah, I know it's a really great source of minerals. 
but yeah, it's nothing I've ever delved into. Do you worry about the misinformation out there spread by c carnivore oh. influencers? I feel like I, I get scared for people's health. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, we know people in the health field. And when you're in the healthcare field and you like deal with people that have like bad side effects from eating like a poor diet, I think, and you hear them tell you about that, that's when it gets like serious. Like these, you know, people are coming in with like crazy high cholesterol from these diets and like all of these issues. Yes. Um, like some doctors that we that, that we, know. we know like personally, and mm -hmm. then they like it's it's like you you see the real consequences, and then when you hear that, um, you're like, oh my gosh, like that's really and these scary. aren't even these aren't even like vegan people like that are no. telling us these aren't doctors that are like you know no, this, talking this about is like, like, these are like and stuff. This is like a you know like a you know yeah. personal people mm -hmm. in our life who are like, hey, like this is like getting kind of scary, and then they like have mentioned like, yeah, like it's, it's just scary to see the misinformation because it, it does af negatively affect the health outcomes for a lot of people right. if they do it for like a, a long period of time. So I, I worry about that. Um, but then, you know, then you hear the kind where people are like, oh, cholesterol doesn't matter. And like all this stuff doesn't matter. You're fine. Like just eat more or like eat a little fruit or something, you mm -hmm. know? And it's like, I don't know. I just get really nervous. It just, it would, it would suck to put your health into like the whole because you're following some a trend. And, and we, yeah, I mean, it's just a, an, a personal anecdote, but we knew a couple uh, from the old, like a gym that we used to go to. And um, the guy, he started talking to me uh, because he found out I was vegan or whatever. And he, his wife was on a carnivore diet for a little while. And, and this is just, you know, people say this about, uh, you know, I knew someone's on a vegan diet and ruined their health or whatever. So I, I realized take, take this for what it is, but she had, and both of them got these crazy electrolyte imbalances in their body. And they, and you know, sure, probably they weren't doing it right or whatever. Is, That's is what people, gonna, say, people are right? going to yeah. say, but she couldn't recover from it. And her, her health continued like to, to decline when she was like perfectly healthy before this. And it was like within like a year or so of her doing this. But, you know, I know there's people out there who are doing it and they feel great and they've been healthy for a while and they're, you know, not constipated and whatever. So I, it wouldn't be my first choice. That's for sure. And they, you know, they want to kind of, yeah, it, it is weird. It's, it's kind of crazy. I can't believe how popular it is. And it seems like every few years it like comes back, you know, relabeled something else. It's like Atkins for a while. Then it's this. And now it's like yeah, keto. And then it's like it, carnival. Yeah. But it'll be something else probably hopefully soon enough. But I just, I just worry about like people's health being poorly affected. Mm -hmm. um, and it, and it is, and mm -hmm. it's just really sad. Yeah. It is. And those people are really passionate about it. And yeah, I don't know. They're like completely against vegans too, which is like the other crazy thing that like, you know, <laughs> it's like, like over here living like, and they're mm. just like, no. And that's the thing. I never like, you know, you, yeah. you watch like their content and it's it always really like mean super mean. Yeah. <laughs> and then they, they do their thing. And then, but yeah, ours, I'm never like, I'm never like I mean, talking crap about them or anything. It's anyone. just like, Hey, here's what we're doing and it's working. And like, you know, maybe look into the science if you want and yeah. you'll see that it supports this. And, and they just get like hate videos made on us and like yeah. people saying we're ugly and deteriorating and stuff. And it's like, well, I don't know. We're just trying to live our life. Like that seems really mean, but yeah, exactly. Oh man. Okay. What is it? Is there anything bad about eating uncooked quick oats? And by that, I mean, quick oats that are just soaked for a few minutes. Well, if you want, if you follow any carnivore pages, you'll know that oats are poison. <laughs> they're trying to kill you and they st actually steal your nutrients. <laughs> I don't know if you knew that, but uh, if you are going to eat but them. But we don't, we don't, but well, you know, we're a little different here. Um, yeah. The, uh, th it's fine because they're cooked. Yes. And you know, what's funny is that I used to see like, like, dude, this is years ago now, but like people who are raw, you know what I'm going to say? People who raw are raw, vegan, yeah. like raw vegans and they'd make like you know, oat balls or yeah, something. Oat balls and, with like, dates and oats. So and they'd be cooked. like raw oat balls. And it's like, but the oats are like cooked before you made yeah. them in there. So I believe oats are like steamed, like they're pressed and then yeah. they're steamed. And so, uh, it's totally okay. They're rolled. Yeah. They're rolled or whatever, but they are like, <laughs> they're cooked. They're not, um, yeah. they're not raw. So just soak them. But, uh, yeah, I would soak them until they're kind of like soaked through or else it's yes. going to like absorb a lot of your like, yeah, be liquid a little, from your <laughs> be a little dry to eat. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> And that's oh, whenever I'm making yeah. cookies, that's what I found to be like good because if you've ever made uh, cookies with oats and then you cook them and then they come out and the inside of the oat is still dry, yeah. what I'll do is I'll put like, I'll mix some uh, banana and maybe some like um, soy milk or something in the oats first and then I'll let them sit there for a few minutes and then like soak that liquid up so that they get hydrated. A little bonus tip for you guys. <laughs> um, okay, what else? Someone said, I love my zero shoes. Cool. 
Um, I'm sure we'll get a pair someday. I don't know. I love my lens. Mm -hmm. I love my new lens. They're yeah, they're really nice and light. Me. You know, we've talked like, so much about shoes this. Uh, yeah. This, um, if any of the companies are watching. I know. Uh, <laughs> let us know. No, I'm just kidding. So uh, what what could the what could be the reason when some vegans don't build as much muscle as their animal eating peers? Yeah, the, uh, this could be. Uh, there are many factors probably you know uh, the first thing i think is maybe they're not eating enough because we know that like calories from plant foods especially whole plant foods are not nearly as dense as you know meat eggs dairy uh that sort of thing uh it could be total total like you know protein intake but i don't think so because i know you know i know i don't know it could be that it could be that um but then also just could be like your genetics and you know, it could be how you're also how not you're, working out hard. How enough. you're working sorry, out as well. But I think yeah. that's like a big issue is people often just do not work out. Yeah. Um, to the point where they're gonna be making like pretty good gains. Also, yeah. it's really hard to make gains the more that you're like into bodybuilding. Do you know what I mean? Like after 10 years, it's gonna be hard to make some gains versus like the first year of bodybuilding. I feel like you're new, speaking for me right those now. Those new gains are real. Oh, I speak for myself. Yeah, I know. And now, you know, I go to the gym and I'm like, man, this is I thought this yeah. was going to get easier and I was going to get like more jacked every year, but it's like, no, you got to like really work. Um, obviously that's as like naturals, <laughs> natural lifters. But um, I think that, I think those factors can factor into it. Well, mm -hmm. a lot of times, you know, at the gym, it's like a big part of community. So people talk a lot and they're on their phones and stuff like that, which is totally fine. I do that too. Yeah. Um, but I think you need to really like, you know, you're going to need to like really push it. Uh, uh, but so supplement, different. supplement creatine. If you're not, uh, if you're, mm. you know, struggling or if, if, I don't know if this was a hypothetical question or if it was like you or whatever, but yeah, you know, supplement creatine because that does help, uh, build muscle and helps you recover and train harder. There were some good ones up here. Oh, sorry. Mommy, just, like, mommy, mommy. Mommy. I don't know. Yeah. Um, so yeah. So I don't know, but you know, when we look, I know for me, I've been a natural lifter for a long time now, and I've never, it's never held me back, you know, and I know mm. it's just a single, you know, personal anecdote. And I know I have like a small frame and pretty like round muscles, like, or, you know, just, I don't have a lot just, of just, area. Just that, like a little nug. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just thanks, a Crystal. Nug. Um, so, so, you know, that, that's helped me, but, yeah. uh, uh, you know, I look around the gym at other people that have been training for as long as me or longer and some of the meat meat and aren't as big as, you know, aren't as muscular as me, I should say. And then some of them are more are, muscular yeah. than me and some of them are taking stuff. So, <laughs> um, okay. There was a question about, uh, Oh, somebody asked about golfers elbow. So this is a pretty, you know what this kind of golfers and tennis elbow are probably more common than mm. we would imagine. Um, but yeah, golfers elbow, uh, is on, do you know how hard this is messing with my head? Because Everything I have to do is backwards with this. So, Why is it like this this time? I don't know. Anyways, golfer's elbow. Um, yeah, inside of the elbow. Oh my gosh. And then tennis elbow is uh, more on the outside of the elbow. Yeah, this helped with golfer's elbow. So the though, biggest so thing that know. helped Derek, like Derek did a lot okay. of things initially. Did like stretches. Did yeah, some... this is a really, and this this is oh, probably okay, best. Okay, yeah, okay, okay. this is probably best for tennis elbow and, and golfer's elbow. Um, but look online and see, like there's uh, Bob and Brad had, a, have a really good channel. Um, <laughs> it just looks so weird. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> um, Bob and Brad, uh, have a very good YouTube channel. Although I think it's, uh, is it Bob or Brad? Who's not on this channel anymore because of his health. Uh, but anyways, they are really great. Uh, I think they're probably physiotherapists and they have the best information out there. And whenever I've gone and looked at a whole bunch of different videos on a certain topic, uh, and then I come across like theirs. Theirs is always like the, you know, sort of the, it, it's the consistent with all those other videos. Uh, so anyways, uh, one thing that uh, is often recommended is this, and it's by uh, the brand called TheraBand. And there's a bunch of different exercises that you can do, but basically you have to like, uh, yeah, you got to like, you know, it's about strengthening like the forearm uh, with so yeah just like something like, you kind of go like this there's a, there's different ways to do it but yeah you go like this and then you like pull back like that kind of like you're uh like twisting a motorbike throttle and then you do it like the other way get tension on it this way and do it this way uh and then there's another one where you go like this and you know and then you bend it like this you want probably want this to be on like the ground yeah, on the, but yeah. rather than and but don't lean your whole body into it just twisting like this uh and that really helped me and it also helps to kind of like right after it feels better, which is weird because most of the time when you're doing exercises, uh, like if you're working out or whatever, it starts to hurt a little bit more and more. 
Uh, but yeah, that is, uh, that's been really helpful. Uh, for me, it was how I was sleeping because, but I had golfer's elbow. So this is different than tennis elbow, but I was like sleeping with my elbow. Well, he like, says really that he bent. has golfer's elbow. Oh, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> so, is that the one I, is that the one I had? I don't, you're, you're, yeah, Derek's, golfer's elbow. Derek's is like yeah, the tennis, inside. Yeah, tennis. Okay. So, okay. This is good. Cause I know all about this one. <laughs> I don't know that's why I was going to, that's why I was going to, okay, I brought the thank tape you, over. So thank you. Derek sleeps like this. I don't know. It's crazy. No, I sleep like this. And at, with pressure here, your elbow bent, what happens is there's the ulnar nerve and it could be something other than that. And it's called, um, it's not, uh, what's the, what's the itis called? Um, it's not, what's the one that cashiers get? Anyways, if I think about it, Carpal I'll mention, tunnel? yeah, ulnar, uh, anyways, it has to do with the ulnar nerve, which mm. uh, goes to these fingers. Runs down uh, here and then goes through this. Frank, this is messing me up. Goes through this little uh, like channel here, kind of like kind of in between like your funny bone and elbow or somewhere around there. Anyways, and when your arm's straight, it's relaxed because uh, you know it doesn't have as far to go. But when it's bent, it gets tighter and then it pulls somewhere around here. So if you're con, if you if your elbow's bent and you have pressure here, like if you're on the computer all day and you're like mm. this, uh, or have your arm here, that is a big factor. Uh, for it because you might have think yeah like you know drumming might have done this or working out or whatever but it's probably from some other factors in your life as well so mm -hmm. for me it was my sleep I had to learn to sleep with on my back with my arms straight or on my side or at least if I'm sleeping like this I actually like hang my elbow off my bed uh, so that so that this part isn't being pressed on and then another thing yeah like really massage and working that area uh, to help to loosen that like scar tissue because that does start to uh, build up. And then another thing is that I started to use this tape, which I always, whenever I saw people wearing this, I always thought these people don't know what they're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> this like kinetic tape or whatever. You're like, uh, that well, it's like, is not doing anything. I'm like, how's a little tape going to help? Yeah, anything? It's but, not moving muscle, but it's been, this was like the TSN turning point yeah, for Derek. It so, was like unbelievable. Uh, so what I did uh, was there's a way that you could, if you, if you message me on like uh, Instagram, if you have Instagram in the DMS uh, or you could email me, uh, I can try Derek to find the video. Nutrition.com. I can try and find you the video where it shows how to put this on. But basically, what it is is it it helped to pull. Uh, you you preload the skin and it would pull the skin like this way. Um, yeah. So you have a strip here and you have a strip here and they're both kind of pulling that way and then that way um, because you're that um, the nerve the nerve is attached to like the fascia and all this sort of stuff. So it would help to keep it from flipping over that uh, that bone that's the like the funny bone. But if you have ever suffered with golfer's elbow, you know how you know how rough that is. So, anyways, um, and then that for some reason, like Derek did that for probably like maybe a week or two. Two just, weeks, yeah. Just probably. had it on every day, mm -hmm. and then it eventually just kind of like let that nerve calm down mm -hmm. and like heal up because it wasn't on that that pinch point. And then obviously, have you changed like your sleep? Yeah, and been like better with that and stuff. But that was like huge. And you and you just randomly found that video one day of this guy yeah. just like taping taping it. Mm -hmm. And you're like, ah, I'm I'm just gonna try it because I'm desperate. And then I also supplemented with um, magnesium, 600 milligrams of magnesium bisglycinate or glycinate yeah. every night before bed, uh, and that's supposed to be really helpful for tendon injuries. Okay, moving on. <laughs> Is Skippy peanut butter healthy? Look at the ingredients. Probably not the best because it probably has uh, sugar in it. Some peanut butter, peanut butter even has icing sugar in it. And that stuff is, wow, that is like a dessert, but not good for you. You want just like just roasted peanuts and salt organic if you can, but uh, yeah. No, and no added oils either, especially hydrogenated oils. And that's also what those peanut butters have. Uh, I was just, uh, you can scroll through whatever, pick... Whatever. Oh, yeah, There's I don't lots know. Lots of questions. Thanks uh, for so many questions. I don't know. Anyway, sorry, I was like reading that. Um, Someone asked, do you recommend calorie counting? Um, I'm a woman trying to drop 20 pounds and get into shape. So I think I think so. Like, Sorry, read that one again. Um, do you recommend calorie counting? Oh. I'm a woman trying to drop. If, you're try if you have mm. like a goal in mind, then it, could, it can be really helpful. For and if you don't calories. have any previous uh eating yeah disordered eating, disordered kind of eating issues. Uh, tendencies then um, i think it could be really helpful but, like make it realistic though right mm -hmm. you don't want to be like okay i'm going to count my calories but only do a thousand calories a day mm -hmm. that's not realistic you want to find your like your baseline of like what you're eating right now and then maybe like sl slowly kind of drop it because slower weight loss is better than like fast rapid weight loss especially for yes. your body because your body starts to learn like oh we're at our new weight this is good 
rather than like really fast weight loss. And mm-hmm. then your body um, often like can spring back from that if you go back to eating um, kind of like how you regularly were. I'm whatever. not I'm not great at calorie counting myself because just what, the way that I like cook things, like if you're always eating yes, like, it is. It can be hard. you know, because you have to like measure everything and you don't have to measure like if you're putting like some like green onions or something on your food, like obviously you only really have to measure like the calorie um, rich stuff. And of course you have to know, excuse me, what your total daily energy expenditure is, your TDEE, which you can um, calculate on like an online calculator. But this is all going to be like, it's all rough, right? Like the, you know, the total daily energy expenditure takes into account how much energy you expend during the day on top of uh, your basal metabolic rate. But obviously that's not going to be an exact number. It's going to rank, you know, you're going to be a few hundred calories from what that says. And then when you're kind of like measuring out your food and, and sort of trying to figure out how many calories you're eating, that's going to vary a couple hundred calories as mm-hmm. well. It's really hard to be exact with any of those. So, um, you know, you could use it as like a ballpark, definitely. But just know that, you know, like, yeah, you, I, I don't know. It's kind of, it's definitely like a ballpark and you have to start somewhere. Um, but you should kind of get an idea of how much, you know, you need to eat after a little while. And what I find is just by increasing the amount of uh, like fiber rich and water rich vegetables that I'm eating, like having more bigger salads Mm -hmm. with my meals, more broccoli, you know, just cutting down that portion of like rice or potatoes or, um, uh, you know, beans or whatever, like the more calorie rich portion of the meal, which beans, you know, I'm not saying beans are like out there, you know, making people gain weight, but you know what I mean? If you're going to have you're trying to reduce your calories overall, just a little less beans, a little bit more broccoli, a little bit more, um, you know, and then obviously like cut out the excess oils and uh, as much as you can and processed foods and that sort of stuff is, is really going to help. So, yeah. Uh, so, um, hey, I'm going to find Hey Human and charge double. I don't so, I mean, hey, I'll, I'll pay it. I don't know. Whatever. Someone said that they found this um, on Amazon, but I looked on Amazon. I think Amazon Canada does not have it. Like we can't ship it to mm-hmm. us. It's also, I saw on Amazon Canada, there was like two for like $50. I was like, oh, okay. But I don't think you can get it shipped. Mm. See, Amazon Canada is weird. It'll list things, but then you go and click on it and then you look and it'll be like, does not ship to your country or mm-hmm. like it won't ship or just doesn't have any information. It's like kind of annoying. <laughs> Anyways, um, I think Trader Joe's has a similar knockoff deodorant. Yeah, they probably do, but we don't have a Trader Joe's near us. Or, uh, at, well, I mean, we'll have to look next time we go to the States, but Trader Joe's isn't in Canada. It's very sad. What smell is this? Cedar. This is cedar wood sage. Someone asked Rosewater, coconut, mint, lavender. Which one do you want? Oh, no, you don't really have to send one to me. I was yeah. only joking. But uh, honestly, at this point, they're really hard to find. So, like, any of them would probably be really nice. Yeah. But this one's more of like cedar the wood sage. Yeah, cedar wood sage. I know that wasn't one of the options. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. it's okay, though. You don't You don't have to. Yeah. Um, so, the, oh, man, no, I don't know. I'm going to. Um... <laughs> You're like, no. Uh, the best and healthiest thing I had at vegan campo was the sushi highly recommend. Yeah. The UK does vegan sushi. Like remember there, there was like those sushi burritos at that one uh, time we went to the uh, one of those festivals there. It was amazing. Anyways, let's get another question. Is the recipe for the split pea soup in your ebook? It's not because mm-hmm. it's a recipe that my friend sent me and I don't, I don't, um, I don't know if she created it herself or found it somewhere. So I don't really want to just like pretend it's my own recipe. <laughs> it's not and it might be from a like a a blog or something like that I'm not sure Um, but it's just like a really simple split pea soup Mm -hmm. instant pot recipe Um, somebody asked how long have I been vegan or how long have you been vegan now so I've been vegan I I, I first went vegan just over 15 years ago now Um, but there was a very small time in there where uh, and that was only after maybe it was like maybe the first like after the second year, something uh, that I ate meat a couple times, and that was a weak point, and you know, might have been some alcohol involved, kind of thing. But uh, so, you know, basically, I've been living, you know, vegan for about fifteen years. Um, but I would say, like, you know, if you don't want to count that, I was probably, you know, fourteen, say. And Crystal probably close to that same amount of time, twelve, mm-hmm. thirteen years mm-hmm. at least. From since two thousand or the the end of two thousand and nine. It's been, a, it's been a long time. <laughs> nice. Um, if you take B12, uh, is... Is it better to take cy- cyanocobalamin or nice. methylcobalamin? It's better to take methylcobalamin because it's a mm-hmm. more active form. Mm-hmm. Yep. 
And they're both um, they're both fairly cheap. Someone asked what's a healthy alternative for bread. Oh. I don't know. We we eat bread, we enjoy mm -hmm. it. Um, mm -hmm. just find a bread that is um, you know, the first ingredient is uh whole wheat flour, not wheat flour. Like you want it to be whole wheat flour. And then uh right. one of Dr. Gregor's recommendations is the five to one ratio of five grams of carbs. To every one gram of fiber. Let's try and find a bread like yeah. that. And then you know it's going to be. But if you're not wanting to eat bread, which it sounds like oh, you're yeah. looking for like alternative, <laughs> an alternative to bread. Mm. I mean, you could, I could say like tortillas, you know, the, but I mean, that's, that's kind still of like, bread, that's though. still that's like a flat. bready. Yeah. The only thing that we've tried that, <laughs> I don't know. Um, I remember we made like sweet potato bread, but I you knew just. you were going to say this. <laughs> well, it's the only thing I can think of. And you slice sweet potato really thin and you toast it. And then you can put like, you know, whatever you want on top. And it's supposed to be like a bread alternative. Is it the same at all? No, mm -mm. it's not going to give you what, what kind of bread gives you, but it's an alternative. And mm -hmm. that's what I was trying to offer is mm -hmm. alternative. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> but there isn't really any alternatives I can think like. I'm sure you could make like, we made uh you like, you could, you, you could make, make like, like a lentil seed bread or yeah, something or, or like a lentil, like a pompadom. Yeah. Or like a lentil uh, crepe or something like you, yeah. if you just like blend lentils in water with a bit of salt. Uh, you can you can you know, cook good, that a like a one. like a crepe or that's something. That's more like a or tortilla flatbread. or something. Mm -hmm. So you'd have to like yeah put everything on. That yeah. might be good. Somebody asked, is soya GMO? Some soy is, but a lot of it isn't. Yeah. Uh, Most of the G GMO soy is fed to like cattle. farm animals. It's mm -hmm. not um, made yeah. for humans. Even around here, when we look in grocery stores, almost all of the non-organic soy is non says non-GMO on it. Uh, it's but. You know, maybe some of the stuff that they're, if it's added to uh, non-organic foods, like when you see, you know, they add soy protein isolate or whatever, maybe that is, I don't, mm -hmm. I don't really know. But as far as like the tofu, uh, it's yeah, generally what we see around here is, is non-GMO. Uh, someone asked, do you use oil to cook? Um, oh. I don't use it anymore. And you guys might've maybe noticed in some of the recipes we do sometimes saute with oil, but it's because mm -hmm. we've. Like we'll use a small amount, but it's because we've changed from using nonstick to like stainless steel. Mm -hmm. um, and with stainless steel, it, it can like be sticky, mm -hmm. <laughs> but you can use water. But yeah, um, I like to think of using it as a tool yes. rather than an ingredient. Like I'm yes. not making salad dressings where I'm like, no. boom, like a ton of olive oil. And yeah. this. And, the, and the, you know, I don't think it's all that detrimental to our health other than it's just like a whack of calories that is quite nutrient void. Like a lot of people yes. want to argue that there's so much nutrition in this, but if you actually like, look, there's not a lot, there's a little bit of vitamin <laughs> E uh, and, you know, and then of, of course the fats, but you can get elsewhere from things like, you know, from avocado or actually just eating the olives. And then you get a lot of other nutrients with it as well. Uh, but yeah, we'll use the tiny bit of uh, oil here and there when I'm cooking, but I'm not like deep frying anything. And usually just, you know, just enough to sort of cover the pan, a teaspoon or here. Or there. And we recently, um, are experimenting with a carbon steel pan, mm -hmm. which is kind of like cast iron, but it's lighter. Um, and you have to, you know, you, you season the pan, but a friend of ours who works at a cooking store and he's like a chef, he like mm -hmm. recommended it and he showed Derek how to use it. Yeah. So we've been using that and it's amazing because you don't have to use oil. It, like it, it is just like nonstick. If yeah, you it's season crazy. It well, it's really cool. So we're thinking of doing a video mm -hmm. on it. Um, and maybe including him in the video as well, because he's like, he's like the, the OG, like pan guy. Like he knows so much about pans and his whole mission is to get people, um, out like from using nonstick to, um, carbon steel or like any other kind of uh, mm -hmm. pan. Cause it's just a lot better for you. So that's the only reason why we've maybe included a little bit of more oil than usual. Um, <laughs> cause our, our nonstick pans, I mean, they're not cheap, but they, you know, the coating just wears away after a while. Yeah, and we go it's through. It's not good. We go through a lot of them. It's <laughs> really like not good for you. I have like a stack of them in the garage mm -hmm. that is just like, I don't know what And to then do. once that coating starts to go, it's like, oh, I don't want any of that. So I want any good new pan. Mm -hmm. And then it's just from there, it just happens. So Somebody said, I cannot figure out how to make tempeh taste good when I make it myself, but it's so healthy and I want to figure out how to make it like restaurants do help. Yeah, I, I know some people will like uh, either boil or steam it before they eat. That's supposed to, Ooh. before they cook with it. Um, well, I mean, that's cooking it, but you know what I mean? Before you cook with it how you want to, and that's supposed to take some of the bitterness out. Um, but I've never gone through that process. Uh, you can either, you can marinate it for, you know, like overnight, uh, and that might help. But uh, what I like to do, 
and this isn't probably how you're imagining it because a lot of restaurants sometimes they like deep fry it and it's just you know makes it pretty easy to eat yeah. and uh, especially with like a breading on the outside but one way that we i'll cook with it is like i'll crumble it up and i'll like and then coat it in mm. um in like fajita or taco seasoning and then i'll saute that and that you know with mm -hmm. some uh, onions and garlic and uh, bell pepper and that's a really yummy way to eat it mm -hmm. but it's not eating it like you know strips or whatever like you're probably thinking um if you yeah i don't know yeah you there's a lot just keep experimenting keep trying but yeah maybe the boiling uh might help you can a shaky woozy feeling sort of like a sugar crash be caused by something other than a sugar crash my first thing mm -hmm. is that it could be like reverse of a sugar crash where you're like hypoglycemic or you have low blood sugar mm -hmm. and you're starting to feel that feeling of like, Oh my, like you're past the point of like hunger almost like you're like, wow, I'm like really feeling the effects of like not having anything. Yeah. That's what I, that's where my head goes. Or like, um, or, you know, or blood pressure is another one that kind of, mm. I was thinking, uh, hard, hard to know, or like some type of like vertigo. I, I'm not sure if it keeps up, obviously. Yeah. If you're feeling bad and you've like eaten, and you're well hydrated, then I would be looking at uh, like some other factors, maybe mm -hmm. seeing like health professional just to see like what's going on, get blood tested. Oh my God. Oh my goodness me. Look at your fates. Where were you? Our cat just came inside and she's the dirtiest. Look at, look at those fates. Look at those. <laughs> Do you want to like wipe them or something? I can handle the, the video for a minute. Oh my God. I'm, we've never, what was she doing? Oh, she's all over the carpet. Oh goodness me. N never. I don't think we've ever seen her this dirty before. Okay. Uh, it's just, it's just me now. Um, so, okay. Let's keep going. Uh, someone asked, what is the best way to build muscle while staying lean? Uh, that would be just by eating just a little bit, you know, uh, one to 200 calories above your maintenance. The lean gains is what everybody wants. So, uh, yeah, I'd say that keep protein high. You know, I don't, I don't count my protein ever. Uh, like really don't generally track my calories unless I'm doing like a full day of eating video. So I would say just try and get like a good protein source in at each meal. So, you know, with, if you're having a smoothie, have some protein powder in it. If you're having uh, like, you know, dinner, some, some tofu or uh, tempeh, something like that. Make sure you're eating lots of beans and uh, yeah, you should be good to go, <laughs> but train hard. Is she okay? Crazy. Oh my goodness, man. She um, actually didn't mind it. So, That's but yeah, so, so train hard and then. I don't know. Best way to build muscle while staying lean. Yeah. Just don't increase your calories too much. A lot of people want to do like the dirty bulk or whatever, just, and especially if you're like newer to lifting, you will start to gain muscle pretty, pretty easily here. Move over this way a little tiny bit or yeah, they're perfect. Oh, look at, she's just right between us. Is she? Look at that. Oh my gosh. That's someone with um, dirty little feet right there. Okay. Uh, do you believe that some people could have issues with a 100% plant-based diet in alignment with veganism? So like, could somebody be eating? Yeah. Like, is it for everybody? Right. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. I would like assume that everybody should be able to succeed on a plant-based diet, providing they're eating uh, you know, good variety of food. They don't have any pre uh, underlying like health conditions uh, pre-existing, I should say. And uh, and they're supplementing properly, right? Like they're taking vitamin B12 and D3. And I know everyone always wants to be like, well, if you have to supplement, then it's not like a good diet. But well, everyone's ever, yeah, like I think, you know, a lot of people are vit animals. taking vitamin B12 and D3. It's not just vegans. And I think a lot of people should, you know, consider it because it's not a vegan specific uh, deficiency. Anyways, that's, yeah, I think that's m my answer to that. Uh, were you vegan already when you started building muscle? I'd been vegan for a few years before I started to lift for sure. I was into more like endurance mm -hmm. stuff. Uh, I was really into trail running and uh, some road running as well. And then I moved on to, yeah, lifting weights after I became a nutritionist and people, I started taking on clients or, you know, looking to get some and they'd be like, okay, well, you know, it might work for you but I want to put on some muscle and build muscle and I don't think a vegan diet could do it. And I was like, well, let me, let me show you. And so I did that to prove to myself and to others. And yeah, and I, and I fell in love with it and I still do that. And I do run too still. And I, and I bike and I do lots of, um, you know, endurancey type things, but not like I used to, it used to be like my main focus. <laughs> yeah. And I started to build my muscle almost exclusively with body weight, just with calisthenics mm -hmm. for the first yeah. few years when I built most of my muscle it was just from doing the basics, pull-ups, push-ups, uh, dips, 
and uh, other things at the calisthenics park. And that was mainly just because of a like financial constraints because I had like no money to go to a gym. Um, yeah. And that's about it. That's my whole story. Uh, so, all right, let's see. Just got a standing desk treadmill combo life-changing nice nice whenever i stand up and i do work i always like i'm standing especially if it's like anything around like really focused and then i like find like i just start like fishing the, the chair out from like behind me and then i'll like before i know it i'm just like sitting down i don't know what it is i have trouble <laughs> it's, focusing it, standing it can be up. hard you got it but the whole the thing is that you're not being when you're doing like the standing desk or not the standing desk mm -hmm. sorry the the walking pad mm -hmm. you're not like getting like a sweat on walking and doing work right it's right. like kind of like slower Cause I thought that too. <laughs> I was like, man, that's really hard to like multitask. And then I realized, no, you just kind of walk a little uh, Let's see. Oh, this, yeah. Oh, come on, Derek, show me your muscle. Ah, no, nah, I mean, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, oh, Crystal, do you know of any non-toxic clean sunscreens that you recommend? Good question, Crystal. Yeah, you, Crystal. Her name's also Crystal. Oh, cool. Um, Yes, the but I I use a lot of like Korean or like K beauty stuff, and so their filters are different than what we get in Canada because Canada is very like strict with regulations around sunscreen, um, and so the sunscreen that I, the sunscreens that I like to use on my face are different than the sunscreens that I use on my body. Now a lot of people think that like toxic means like a chemical based sunscreen. Um, I don't feel that way. So my recommendations might not be like that great for you personally, but I really like, um, I'm using the Madagascar, oh, it's by Skin1004. It's a very popular brand and it's like their Madagascar scintilla kind of line. Um, I really like their sunscreen. I really like the COSRX sunscreen. Um, it's like the aloe based one. <laughs> Um, I've used the Pareto brand of sunscreen on my face before, and that one's a little bit greasier. Um, I do like that one. Um, for our body, we use, what did we use last year? The brands, um, I don't know. Oh, oh. it's like the great, the green beaver company. Um, I think that's what it's called in here. Yes. And they do like a mineral based one. Mm -hmm. There's also a company called Th think, and they do a mineral based one. Um, mineral base can be really thick and kind of sometimes annoying. So you have to find like a good, um, a good one. I used to, sometimes I'll look at like baby sunscreens. I know that kind of sounds crazy, but a lot of times they're a little bit more natural. And so I have one, I think it was like, oh, it's, I know that they're in there right now. You can go get bathroom. it if you want. I'll have to, I'll have to see if I can find them. Cause they, these are from last year. These are the ones that I used on my body. Cause I have a tattoo. So I have to be really careful in the sun. Um, let me just see. <laughs> Okay. Um, somebody asked how my sprouts are doing. The I actually I only have um, one jar of sprouts sprouting right now, and there are some like really old broccoli seeds that I found in the back of the cupboard. I just wanted to see if they would still sprout, and uh, it doesn't look like they're doing very good. So you definitely want like fresh seeds. Um, let's see if I can find another question while Crystal's looking for her sunscreen. Oh, she found something. <laughs> this is the brand I was trying to remember. This is actually an Australian brand. So if you're looking for like really good sunscreen protection, I would uh, do this. This is the 50 SPF. It's sen it's for sensitive skin and it's a mineral sunscreen. Mm -hmm. um, we would use, like I would use this on my body. I'm not really entirely sure if I'd use it on my face because I feel like face sunscreens are a little bit more elegant to wear. Um, but I'm pretty sure you use I this do. on your face. I Derek just, put just puts it on, it on everywhere. <laughs> if I'm um, going to be in the sun for like a long time. Cause... Yeah, and we... I like this one. I wish it was in like a bigger bottle, but it works really well. It's because it's mineral based. Like it is like, these are like older from last year, but it's definitely um, thicker, but it works really well on the body. Um, yeah. You just gotta like rub it in pretty good. That's the only thing with mineral is that like, sometimes you get the waste cast, but da, 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 da. so that's, those are the recommendations that I would do that of the brands that are available where we are. Obviously, if you live in the States and stuff, you guys have like so much more access to stuff. So Someone hopefully said that there... answers your question. Okay. Someone said there's no such thing as toxic sunscreen. Yeah, I mean, I would, you know, I would think that too, but a lot of people equate the chemical filters with toxic. And there has been some studies that show that maybe some of them cross into the, uh, like through into the skin, right? The skin is an organ. So you do want to be conscious of what you use, but chemical sunscreens can be really helpful. Um, for some people. 
she sprinted back with that sunscreen like it was a timed game show task. She's efficient. Um, I like talking about sunscreen. I think it's really important to wear it. I wear it almost like every day on my face, yeah. <laughs> which sounds really crazy in the winter. I know Derek's just like, you're crazy, but I think it helps. I mean, like, I think I have like pretty good like skin. I don't you know. Mean, it's like just part of my skin. Less routine. wrinkles than me who just like goes out and just like st stares at the sun. Whenever I know, I get I'm, a chance. I'm also like a little bit younger, but yeah. Yeah. Hopefully <laughs> okay. That, so hopefully that helps. That's like all my, my tips. Um, somebody asked, um, what supplements do I currently take? Well, just really, really quickly. I take, um, if you're considering like the you know protein powder and creatine are two that I consume and then uh, vitamin, well, I take the, the veg, I'm not, you know, the shameless plug veg essential, uh, which is from veg nutrition, who I'm a, uh, an ambassador for. I take two capsules of that every day because it covers me for all the bases. If you're still watching this, actually, it's just, <laughs> just really quick. I might as well mention it because they're doing 25% off. Uh, today's the last day. They were just doing it the last two days. If you use my discount code, Derek15, there's a link in the description box down below. J no pressure. I just thought I would let you guys know because we're on the subject. But um, yeah, it's a cool supplement because it has uh, vitamin B12 in there, D3, and omega-3s, all in pretty good amounts in just like two capsules. And then it also has some zinc, selenium, uh, and a tiny bit of magnesium as well. So I take two of those every day. Uh, and that'll cover me for those. But in the middle of winter, I do take an additional D3 supplement because I want to get more than just the 2000 I use per day. So I'll take that uh, as well. And then I take uh, magnesium, 600 milligrams of magnesium, like I mentioned before, uh, mm -hmm. before bed. Uh, and what else do I consume? Uh, iodine. And that's really it. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. No, that's it. I already said because the omega three is in the uh, in the veg, so yeah, that's those are the those are the ones that I take. I have other ones like every once in a while I'll be like read something about like milk thistle or something like that, and then I go and like buy a bottle and I'll take like you know I'll take it for like a week and I'm like I don't know I'm not skinny yet or something I don't know. Yeah, there's just... like this woman that works at the supplement store who's like around the same age as us and she's super nice and she's you know she's <laughs> seen us through some things hey yeah <laughs> yeah like, like, i want to try milk thistle for this and she's like okay so she like helps you pick out one and she must just yeah there like, was a time where i was people like people are like crazy <laughs> yeah i was like trying i was like i wonder if i can maximize my testosterone by <laughs> taking this like woman's like uh, you know estrogen block or something like <laughs> yeah. because my yeah my, when i got my blood test back my like the the free testosterone was good but compared to my testosterone, it, you know, I felt like it could have been higher. So I'm like, I wonder if I could take this to block whatever. And she was like, okay, good yeah, luck. Yeah. And, you know, I don't know. I did that for a while. I just like experimenting with these things. But uh, I don't, it didn't, it didn't really work that well. But also didn't turn into a woman. <laughs> You're like, I don't know. This, uh, this is so funny. You grow broccoli sprouts. Why not alfalfa sprouts? Well, because broccoli, I, I do sometimes have alfalfa sprouts as well. Yeah. I have that in uh, like a salad mix of sprouts. That's like kind of my favorite one. Um, but broccoli sprouts are extremely high in sulforaphane, which is a extremely potent uh, antioxidant, but also, you know, I'm sure you've heard of it, many other things. Uh, and it's much higher, like something like 50 to 100 times higher in broccoli sprouts than it is in broccoli alone. And uh, there, there's always new evidence and research coming out about how health promoting uh, sulforaphane is for uh, everything from like blood sugar regulation to brain health to uh, anti-aging and that sort of thing. So that's why I grow broccoli sprouts, but uh, you know, any sprout's gonna be better than no sprout. Okay, let's keep going. We're gonna be on here for just another few, yeah, another couple, handful of questions. Um, we're going to be going on a big bike ride today. So we're going to go and do that, uh, after this, it's beautiful. Warmest day of the year here so far. It's like, it's finally, we <laughs> so can see fun. the light. So if you guys know, we live in the Pacific Northwest, we live in British Columbia and it's dark and rainy for like six months straight. Like we've had a pretty mellow winter. It's, it's been this, like a mellow winter. And the fact that it hasn't been like really, really cold, mm -hmm. like you can go outside and you're like, okay, like I still wear like my workout skirts at the gym and stuff yeah. like that. And I'm like, Oh, I'll put my leg warmers on, but it's not that cold. Mm -hmm. Um, but today it's actually like sunny mm -hmm. and you just want and to warm be it's like 15 degrees celsius somebody said tongkat ali maybe oh uh, yeah was that the one no well, that's not the one we got from naked naturals but uh no, Derek the... has, has tried that okay yeah so yeah i i don't know <laughs> I, i've tried because i've tried i used to work at a supplement store so i tried like tribulus for a while and i found that that definitely like it increased my libido how much it increased like my you know like testosterone for like a muscle building uh abilities i don't really know um but, you know, I've tried that, 
Yes. And I've, I've tried a few other of those sort of like natural like supplements. Mm-hmm. And uh, anyways, and then recently read about Tomcat and I'm like, okay, I'll try this. And I found a company and I think it's called Solar Ray. So don't make the same mistake I did because I looked and it's like 300 milligrams of this, uh, of in most of the studies, it's like 300 milligrams is what's been shown to help um, like boost testosterone and help, you know, with muscle <laughs> building and that sort of thing. So I was like, all right, I'm going to try this and see how it goes. And uh, so I bought the supplement and then when I got it, I was looking at the package and I'm like, and it was 300 milligrams. And that's what this, that's what all the science says, but it's a 20 to one extract is what most of the, most of the, at least some type of like, re, you know, concentrated extract. And I'm looking at this and I'm like, this doesn't show like what, how, what the concentration is of this. And then, so I messaged the company and they're like, no, we use like the whole herb. So it's like <laughs> nowhere, you'd have to be eating 20 times of what the, you know, the record, you'd have to be eating like two bottles of this stuff a day in order to get the benefit. And anyway, so I took it like a couple times and then I was like, this isn't worth it because it's probably, you know, who you. knows, it's probably not good. It's probably, who knows if there's heavy metals in this or whatever. We know how that, you know, industry is um, regulated. So I was just, and I was bummed that they put the exact amount in that, that, you know, most of the science is on, but it's not the extract. So anyways, I haven't uh, tried that. And I just kind of got turned off and I was like, you know what, I'm not going to, whatever gains I can make, like just eating good and mm-hmm. sleeping well, and just getting all that dialed is the best that I'm going to probably be able to do. And anything beyond that, you know, what, uh, creatine aside, that's definitely one that helps a lot. Uh, so someone asked um, any LA vegan spots you could recommend visiting next month and no clue where to start. Well, it depends. I mean, if you're in depends like, depends on where you are. Yeah. If you're, we only kind of know like the Venice beach, uh, sort of like Santa Monica area. Cause mm. we tend to not leave there. We've never, <laughs> never been downtown LA, but all the times that we've been to, uh, which I think next time we go to LA, we'll maybe like rent a car or something. And then maybe we can go to all these spots. Cause there's a few like skate spots you want to try it, like figure out. We want to kind of go through like the, the hills or not the, hills, the Hollywood Hills. Yeah. Um, and Beverly we've never Hills. done that. And we've been to LA like quite a few times. We have been for a hike, like, uh, Los like in the Leones Canyon, Canyon. Or, or something, but we want to like explore. So we don't really know, uh, the general like downtown kind of LA, but okay. So, but, um, uh, cafe, cafe gratitude, gratitude. Amazing. Yeah. Uh, Takaya. Takaya. Amazing. Not all vegan there. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, it depends if you want to support a non-vegan restaurant or not, but you know, if you, if everyone goes yeah. and just buys vegan stuff from a non-vegan restaurant, then they're going to make more vegan yeah. items on their menu. Takaya, really, really good. Go on Tuesdays for Taco Tuesday, but uh, yeah, whatever. And then there's Thai vegan, which is kind of, which is good. Not like our absolute more like favorite. a fast, not fast food, but like like a, like it's like a Chinese restaurant, like Thai restaurant, right? Yeah. So you kind of like <laughs> not, 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 not Chinese. Chinese. Sorry, no, no, I don't mean that. I mean that's the kind of food that you're getting. Though. Yes. Um. So you kind of <laughs> have to realize that. And then beside that, there's a vegan sushi place, which apparently is amazing, but we didn't try that. Mm-hmm. So remember last time we saw Paul there, and he's like, "Yeah, I got this like amazing sushi." Paul who? Paul. The Gelder. Yeah. Just we dropping him. some names, you know, just saw him and we were so chatting, we're like, hanging out. Hey. Um, oh man, there's this one place we we went a couple times because we were closer to it. Is it Backyard Bowls? Is that yes, what it's called? Yes, Backyard Bowls. Yeah, really good. They do like so my, it was like my favorite. Yeah, they do, they'll do, oh, it's so classic good. like <laughs> vegan stuff. They have like you'll you'll get like smoothie a smoothie bowl, yeah, or like a, a little like little bowl of whatever. You Sorry. get like an eight dollar like uh yeah. avocado toast, but it'll be like beautiful. Oh, and you know? I had this like I think it was an Sourdough. almond butter toast or like some type of toast. It was so good. We only went there a couple times because it's kind of um it's more like Santa Monica area. Mm-hmm. Amazing. I'm sure people in the chat will um, have a bunch because you know, yeah, we, I, oh, uh, pure, what is it? Plant food and wine. Yes. That was like a more, that's like like more of like a bougie upper end plant-based restaurant. So if you want to like impress people and be like, Hey, like it can be like really elevated. We've been there before. Um, I want to, where else have we been? Oh, what was the place we went to, uh, plant, uh, the one. Oh my goodness. That one was so good. Playa. No, um, it's near the Trader Joe's. It's sorry, cats jumping in. It's near the Trader Joe's in Cucina, Marina Cucina del Planta Cocina. Planta Cocina. Probably not pronounced right. Yeah, but P L A N T A C O C I N A. I think it that is. was amazing. It's like more of like a fine dining experience. Uh, at least for us, it was because <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, it was like wait, nice. I was like looking and and you know I kind of the the bowl like the food was like it was like kind of expensive, but then we got like a couple bowls and it was like, they're small, you know, yeah, it's, not, it's not more a like a sharing so you kind buy of experience, a, a so bunch of things, bunch, so but be yeah. prepared to spend some money, but like really, really nice quality, good. really nice atmosphere. If you can go yeah, uh, make, beautiful. make reservations, go around sunset and, you know, try and sit at that end of the restaurant if you can. Yeah. Pff, unbelievable. 
Uh, but yeah, lots of fun places. Like uh, we love, we love it there. Uh, oh, that that pizza. If you someone mentioned pizza in the comments, oh yeah, pizza. I don't know the um, name of that pizza place though. There's a pizza place that's on like uh, the boardwalk of Venice Beach. You have to go. They don't even say that it's vegan. And they don't say it's vegan, but so it you, is. So you walk up and you're like, I don't know if I want to try this. And our friends are like, No, it's like all vegan. And we were like, Okay, well, I guess I'll try like the pepperoni pizza. Honestly, unbelievable. Derek is going to try to find the name of it. Yeah, it's like, you know, it's some calorie dense stuff. Um, Love Amaro Pizzeria. Yeah. Love Amaro. And that's, it's kind of like a hole in the wall. Yeah, off the it Venice is literally <laughs> like you order from a little wall, yeah. hole in the wall, uh, just off the of Venice Boardwalk. Somewhere around Venice. Like, and they have Boulevard. like the craziest pizza combination. They'll have like a mac and cheese pizza. I really like the pepperoni just like because that, oh, unbelievable. But they have like mm. the craziest combination. So that was really good. There was another place on the boardwalk as well that we got like kind of like smoothie bowls. Yeah. Um. So I don't remember the name of it, but you'll. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah but some people said they use like artificial dyes and stuff to oh. make it like blue and that sort of thing. Where I, I, I just assumed it was like algaes and stuff like that. So right. I don't know about that place. Um, and they so, didn't yeah. really let, you'll, yeah. you'll find, you'll find like a lot to eat. You'll explore probably more than, mm -hmm. more than, but definitely have. check it out. Like, yeah. Cafe gratitude is like a rite of passage for like vegans. <laughs> yeah. If you're going to yeah. uh, LA, check that place out. Yeah. Um, super yummy. And they, the servers, like when you, they get to the table, they're like, what are you grateful for today? And you're like, I don't know. Like just being here and they about to eat some vegan food. And then all their, mm. all their, like the bowls are called like, you know, it, it's like affirmations, yeah. like the bowls. So I am like, yeah, it's like, I am happy or beautiful. Am, and they're yeah. like, okay. And yeah. then, you get like that. <laughs> but the food's really good. Uh, and the pizza and, and the portions are very oh, good. Oh, what too. was the other one that was that, that I think it's owned by the same people as Cafe Gratitude. Do you remember, uh, was that plant food and wine where they had the, the pizzas that we'd always get that were like from like, the... no, no. Oh, okay. Remember that Crystal's got a good brain for this kind of I stuff. I don't remember where that was. So to answer the question, do you ever have a cheat day and like, uh, eat pizza? Yeah. Yes. Sometimes I do. I don't like schedule a cheat day in, you know, I just like, I know that I feel best. I perform best, uh, when I'm just eating, Come on. you know, good whole plant foods for the most part. So it's, um, it's easy for me to stick with, right? And then every once in a while, yeah, I'll just, I'll be like, you know what? Today, don't feel like cooking. Let's order uh, pizza. Yeah. But then a lot of the time we'll go, hey, we have some stuff here to make pizza and like, we'll just make it ourselves. And it's like, you know, slightly mm -hmm. healthier and just as delicious and a lot cheaper. But yeah, I do. I do have those days um, where I'll well, I mean, like last night we uh, were hanging out with Derek's mom. And then um, we went for like a walk at yeah. the beach and then we were like, hey, why don't we go out for dinner? And so we went to one of our favorite places that has some like vegan dishes and it was like so good. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's fun. Yeah. I don't remember the name of that restaurant that we went uh, to. Okay. It was really nice. That's okay. Because um, so, we've only been there a couple times, like the first trip to yeah. LA. Oh man, Eddie, Eddie Make says, I'm exploring Vancouver Island in two weeks. Any recommendations? Mm. I have tons, tons for you, but like. I don't know. I don't want to go over them all on here. Yeah, and it if, really depends on the area. Where you are, in. right? Because there's like yeah. Victoria, which is south on the island. And then there's where we live uh, in Parksville, uh, which is the middle of the island. And then if you're here, you might as well go over to Tofino, which is on the west coast of the island. Uh, so, mm. yeah, I, I don't like, you know, and I don't know if you're looking for hikes or or whatever. So if you send me a DM in on Instagram, if you're on there, I will be looking at it today if, uh, and I'll try and get back to you on there. You could always send me an email and I could get back to you quickly on there as well. Um, yeah, it depends on what area you're in. And we, you know, we have some knowledge of the mid island. We don't really know um, a lot about what to explore kind of in like Victoria or like upper island. But, but it just the city of Victoria um, is like really cool. Oh, so beautiful. Yeah. Um, so much fun And then there's the park there. there, whatever it is, uh, Beacon Hill Park. And it has like, yeah. just like peacocks running around like wild, which are, it's kind of yeah. weird to see that. Um, but and there's, then there's yeah. tons of hikes and stuff up by where we live. Um, you know, like little Qualicum falls is one of the most beautiful places on earth. And same with, uh, Englishman river falls as well. Great, two great places to hike and explore and you won't get lost. Cause it's just like yeah. really easy little loops and trails. If you know so, where, yeah, if you know where you're going, you should mm -hmm. go on alltrails.com mm -hmm. and then just type in like the, t the, like the town that you're staying in. And then it'll come up with like all the trails, all the hiking yeah. around. And that's been like really helpful even for us. We yeah. live here, but it's really helpful for us to like plan hikes and stuff like that because it's, it's such a beautiful place that you should plan to do some hikes, get out, get out into nature because that's really what it's all about here. And most of the, most of the cities are on the uh, East coast of the Island. So facing back towards uh, like Canada. So they're kind of, we're sh sheltered yeah. from the, 
real like gnarly weather of the West Coast. But if you have time and you have a car, Tofino is a beautiful place that um, is known for like its surf. Yes. And Very it's just really unique because it's a lot different than the rest of Vancouver Island because there's lots of like gnarly like rocks. And uh, what do they call those things when they're like a like a just a rock that's like out of the ground, like, you know, like a Cannon Beach. Anyways, there's all sorts of like that kind of mm. cool stuff there. Um and lot like very like lush like rainforest. Uh, of course, it's yeah. a northern rainforest. Crazy beaches, like you just. And then yeah, know. really long like beautiful sandy beaches. So, anyways, um, I don't know Comox Valley. No, someone asked if I know of any plant based restaurants in the Comox Valley. Uh, no, we know of that one in Lady Smith, but that's not really mm. Comox Valley. But other than that, no, it's not we really. We haven't really explored a lot mm -hmm. of um, Comox and Courtney area. Jaden asks, natural vegan remedies for PMS. I'm in so much pain right now. Oh, man. I know that like uh, having a good, uh, it seems like when you were eating a good amount of flax, soy, phytoestrogens seem to help mm -hmm. with uh, with uh, PMS. And then also, yeah, do you have any more suggestions? <laughs> well, if you're in pain right now and you're having cramps, it can be really hard to like get out of that. I find for me personally, like heat to mm -hmm. be really helpful. So like a hot water bottle, uh, maybe even some hot tea. Um, you, yeah. And then like preventatively. Some good comments, some good recommendations here. Just to... Yeah. Um, ginger. Yeah. Someone said ginger is great for cramps. So you can have like a ginger tea or something with like a little bit of ginger in it. Um, preventatively having ginger, you know, like a few days beforehand can be really helpful. Um, like zinc is a really good nutrient for periods just in general that can help. Um, Someone set up your calcium for cramps. Mm. Mm -hmm, maybe. Yeah. It's really hard when you have, when you're like having cramps, there's not really something that's like, like, that's why I said heat is really mm. helpful. If you don't want to take like, you know, pain medicine. Um, someone mentioned oh. ginger and beetroot. Mm. That's really interesting. I never thought of beetroot for PMS, but that could probably be really helpful. Want to go back to the supplement thing really quickly because somebody was mentioning calcium for cramps. And um, it just reminded me of vitamin K2, which is also in that uh, the supplement list that's in the veg multi, which I which I take. And if I wasn't taking that, I'd be taking it on its own as well. It's a good thing to have with vitamin D3 because it helps to mm. uh, distribute the calcium to where it needs to be rather than just um, in your bloodstream, which can happen if you just take loads of D3 and you're eating calcium. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's a good idea to have K2 with it. Fun little story. I took a bunch of vitamin D3 not too long ago and um, and I was th taking that and I was out of the veg so I wasn't taking vitamin K2 and I got like the craziest like twitch in my eye and then I was like researching for so long to see what it could be uh, and it was like magnesium this and that and stuff that I didn't think that I'd be deficient in. and then I read somewhere if you're not taking K2 with uh, higher doses of vitamin D3 that could be it so maybe uh, with the with the cramps who knows with the calcium K2 think about that. So someone says, because we're talking about like menstrual health and stuff like that. Someone just mentioned, I haven't had my period since I've been vegan. Hmm. And I just wanted to say that if that's the case, I would really look at your nutrition and what you're eating because it's not normal to just not have a period, especially if you're in your menstruating years. Um, it's actually quite unhealthy. And I'm only bringing this up because I went many years um, in my like teens and early 20s having a very irregular cycle. And I didn't really think much of it because I was like, oh, whatever. It's kind of nice to not have like a period every month. Um, but it's actually really unhealthy because your period and your menstrual cycle um, does so much for your health. It's how, I mean, it's how you make like hormones mm -hmm. and stuff like that. So if you're not having a, a, a period, I would really look into that. It could be due to like low calorie intake, um, possibly not having like enough fats. Um, those things can really uh, like affect your uh, natural like rhythm and stuff with your cycle. Other things that can happen is like maybe like uh, low nutrient intake of, you know, zinc, iodine, that kind of thing. Um, if you're eating like a good amount of calories and stuff, then that's like, you know, you probably don't have to worry about that. But if you're not having your period, I would like suggest, you know, just being conscious of that because that's mm -hmm. like a, a huge indicator that something is not right. Um, it could also be maybe you're working out too much. It's a huge thing. Mm -hmm. um, and then like a lot of people think, well, it's really healthy to work out a lot. And it's like, well, yeah, if you're eating like enough to like maintain how much you work out. But a lot of women we often like work out too much and then don't eat. We like don't eat enough. Um, and then that can really negatively affect things. And that can be uh, what's called the female athlete triad, which is actually a really big thing in sports when women don't eat enough and then over uh, are overactive. Um, and that can cause a lot of health issues as well. So I would, I just wanted to bring that up because um, it's just something to be conscious of because once you get back into like a natural 
uh, flow and you and you have your cycle every month and stuff, you'll feel so much better. I promise you. Mm -hmm. I promise you. Any any um, supplements or should we not go there because it's like kind of. Um, I wouldn't remember, say I wouldn't start with supplements. Okay. If you if you lost your period, I wouldn't yeah. start with supplements. I would start with looking at like diet because there first. are herbs out there, but you got to be careful. Yeah, but I wouldn't I wouldn't okay. go there first of okay. all. Um, yeah, there are there are herbs out there. You know, like there's like Vitex and mm -hmm. stuff, but I wouldn't want someone to just take herbs and like mask maybe what's deeper going. No, on, exactly. Which can be but it, if, if you're doing all the right things and it can exactly. and it can help get it back. Yeah, but yeah. do the, all the other things um, yeah. first and work with somebody yeah. to look into that. And if you're doing like all the right things and still not coming back, then there could be like a deeper hormonal issue going on, mm -hmm. which would be really good to talk to a healthcare provider. But I know when I started to eat like better, eat more fats, um, and like it was really like actively kind of working towards getting my period back and like really conscious, um, that that was like really the big thing that helped me just focusing on diet and stuff. Cool. Good. Yeah. Good. Uh, good one, Crystal. Somebody said they finally tried a strawberry smoothie with cilantro. And I can honestly say it's really, really good. I oh, know. Nice. It seems so crazy <laughs> to add cilantro to smoothies, yeah. but I don't know. I never realized how weird it was until I started putting that online. And then I was like, what the heck? That is not for smoothies. But once people try it, they tend to really like it. All right. We'll answer like uh, three more questions and then we're going on a bike ride. I think um, we've answered a lot of these. Yeah, I think so too. I was just looking to see. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Oh, so bossy sometimes. Um, okay, so maybe not. Maybe everyone's, uh, for some reason I can't go up and see more comments. Oh, you'll be able to see the comments once this is published. I don't know why you can't go up uh, now. Somebody asked if we're 100% oil-free. No, uh, you know, like it, I, you must have tuned in late, but like I mentioned, use oil uh, a little bit to, to help with like, uh, sticking. If I'm cooking something that might stick, you could also use like a bit of water stuff that might help sometimes too. Uh, and then I'll eat like tortillas that have some oil in it. And occasionally I'll have like, uh, um, you know, have these like frozen noodles from Costco that sometimes I'll cook up and they have like sesame oil in them. Mm. And occasionally I'll eat something like that, but it's definitely like, I try to make oil, not like a big part of my diet. Like, you know, I just, I don't really use much of it. I should say. Someone said, are there any greens mixtures that equates to a B12 shot? That's what my doctor said for me to do, but I don't know where to start. Oh. I would suggest if your doctor says take a greens mixture instead of B12, ask them what greens mixture they are talking about. Mm -hmm. Because oftentimes a greens powder would have probably just added B12 to it. Yeah. So essentially you're just going to be buying like a really expensive supplement when B12 is actually really cheap to buy. Mm -hmm. um, if you have issues with B12 and like acne or something, and that's why you're not taking a, B, a B12 supplement, you can go, you can, you can like, if you get a liquid B12, just take like a little, like little doses mm -hmm. every day. Well, that's the like thing. Big doses. A lot of these supplements come with like a thousand micrograms yeah, a day a or even more so that they can show it has like 4,000% of your RDI of vitamin B12 in it every day. Um, because it like looks good on the label, but we don't need that much. And like Crystal mentioned, and which happens with me, if I take a large amount for uh, any length of time, I, I get breakouts and it's uh, really frustrating. And so anyways, but I don't think that was their, their issue. Just like, um, I'm just, I'm just surprised that your doctor wouldn't just, if you needed a B12, it's so cheap it's, and simple. I just, well, I don't understand why they wouldn't just recommend mm -hmm. either a B12 supplement or give you the shot. Yeah. Especially if you're low in B12, cause you don't want to be low in B12. So I would just ask them like what they mean by a greens powder. Mm -hmm. Um, but I mean, sure. I'm sure there's like lots out there on the market but they will just probably have added B12 to them anyways. Yeah. There's nothing special about it. Um, then they someone, just supplement someone asked, I asked above if you think people eating a whole food plant-based diet could overeat. And if you have any suggestions, mm. um, I definitely think it's, it's possible. Sometimes when you just take out like, <laughs> you know, a few things from your diet, it can be possible to, to like wanting to eat all of those things. Again, I know some people that go whole food, whole food plant-based eat really low fat. And then, so sometimes mm -hmm. at the end of the night, you're still like kind of lower in calories or you're not as satiated because you haven't had uh, like a fat source or something like that. So like maybe looking at that, um, if that's something that you're struggling with, I think any diet people can tend to overeat because we overeat for a lot of uh, reasons, like emotional. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you're bored or you're mm -hmm. watching a show and you're like, wow, it'd be really nice for me to like eat something mm -hmm. right now, but you're not hungry. Um, so learning hunger cues can be really helpful. Mm -hmm. um, but some, you know, we eat because we're bored or we eat because maybe there's like family pressure like, oh, eat everything on your bowl, you know, or eat everything on your plate. Like a lot of us grew up like that. So you kind of tend to do that. Um, mm -hmm. But a lot, oftentimes people will end up overeating if they are like lower in calories throughout the day. Yeah. Uh, raw vegan diet, your take. 
Yeah, well, uh, we had somebody mention in here that they raw vegan and they they're doing they feel great and they've been doing it for years. So it you know, and I know people that have. So it's clearly possible. Um, the you know the the why I I don't I don't necessarily like promote it because one I like cooking and I like uh, you know I like the the taste of cooked food and everything. But the most and and I'm again I'll preface this with I've seen you know that I know of people who succeed uh, by yes. eating this way, but the most people that I've seen struggle on a plant-based diet and then go back to eating uh, meat and, you know, dairy and fish and that sort of thing are people that have been on a raw vegan diet or have tr uh, like, you know, who've tried to do that for a while. And then they've either suffered some health consequences or got tired of the having to put in like the effort or whatever. And I know there's people watching me being like, whatever, it's easy for me. I've been doing it for a long time. And I know that, um, but I'm just saying what I've seen, I've seen a lot of things through my time being, uh, you know, a nutritionist and then also um, just being in this space for, you know, well over a decade now. Um, so, you know, I think, yeah, I think you could definitely uh, live that way. What was the exact question? Yeah, my take. That's basically my take. I think mm -hmm. that for in Canada here, when we go and get like fruit in the middle of winter, <laughs> it's like you're you're getting melons that are like just like taste like water like they're not you know they're not good yeah, quality not fruits yeah you can only get so far off of eating like bananas and dates uh and that sort of thing and uh it's it, it makes it hard right and i've seen you know i've also but i have seen people that that make it work and it's fine for them uh and i know yeah people are really passionate about that and if it's working for you and you're coaching people through it and and whatever you know you're helping others do it okay great but it's uh in yeah my experience i think you can get uh, like all the health benefits and you can feel great and everything by including some cooked foods in your diet. And I think that having a large portion of your diet as raw food, I think is an amazing thing, but why you wouldn't eat things like beans or, uh, you know, whole grains and, uh, like oatmeal and stuff, you know, because you're worried that it's like going to be detrimental to your health. I don't know. I don't see that myself, but if it resonates with you and it's working, then cool. Yeah. How about the breatharian diet? Um, yeah, I don't know about that one. That was a thing like a while ago, but yeah, I don't think it can work. Like you got to eat, you got to eat, but I'm trying to do that right now for as many hours of the day as I can because <laughs> your boy's trying to cut for summer. So I'm on that. I'm on that breatharian diet for a few hours a day. Um, someone said, oh, I don't know what that is. Uh, I like your content, especially Costco runs. Yo, okay. While we're here, I want to know what you guys want to see put it in the comments because you know i i feel bad just doing recipe videos every week and then i'm like well what should i do maybe i'll do a full day of eating and then it's really that's just like a recipe video that's just kind of like snuck in there with a bit of a workout and some like you know meandering through the forest in the day uh and i'm not really the like sciencey guy on youtube because uh you know there's people that do a lot better than me obviously dr gregor and there's like um, Mike, Mike, the vegan, uh, he, you know, and that sort of stuff. And I don't really enjoy like thumbing through papers and trying to figure it out. So, you know, like, yeah, I'm just curious, what kind of content do you want to see from me? Do you guys like the recipes? Do you want to see more like vlog style stuff with like crystal involved with it? Um, do you want to see, uh, more of like, yeah, some workout stuff. I know this workout stuff always gets brought up, but then when I do it, people, it's like such a small part of my audience that seems mm -hmm. to care, but Th you know, throw the suggestions out there. Um, yeah, I, I, I got to know what you want to see. I have lots of ideas, but I talk myself out of them. I think everybody goes through this like self-doubt where I'm like, I don't know, this idea is not good enough. And Crystal's really good at talking me up and being like, no, no, just stick through it. People, you're helping people. This is what they need to need to see. But um, anyways, a carbon steel pan video. Mine is collecting dust because I gave up on it. Cool. Yeah, I really want to do a video on uh, like on cookware because I did actually put a, um, a question on Instagram when I did a post mm -hmm. about using carbon steel cookware. And it was like 90% of people said that they were interested. I was like, are you interested in cookware? Yes or no. And I think it was like 90 plus percent of people said that they were interested. And I think it's a really cool topic. A lot of people want to know, you know, what they should be using and how, how to use it and that sort of thing. And the guy that we have access to, um, his name is Jed. He actually has a YouTube channel called cook culture. Uh, and he also has a store in town. And it's um, a really nice, like, kind of, I would say, high-end kitchen 
ware store where he did just like really highly curated thing. He has an online store as well, but really highly curated products. That's just like the stuff that is like good quality and works really well. It'll last and, forever. Um, and he knows yeah. his stuff and he, and he knows how to, you know, season pants, bring pans back from the dead. And, uh, you know, and he's got his own opinions on, on, um, nonstick and on, uh, stainless steel and that sort of stuff as well. And, um, yeah, I think I want to do a video in collaboration with him because he also has like a really cool little kitchen test space in his in his um, kitchen store there, and we could do the video there. So, anyways, uh, we want to see it. Uh, recommend just getting live stream camera headbands and live stream twenty four hours a day, seven <laughs> days a week. The people have spoken. Yeah, right. Uh, how has the world not tainted your heart? I uh, yeah, I don't know. It, it, it has, <laughs> but we just keep on doing our thing, like you know, a lot of the stuff is out of our control. And, um, you know, like the Stoics said, you just got to focus on what you can control. Probably didn't say it just like that. But uh, yeah, just, you know, to find the beauty in the world, go out into nature, talk to your neighbors, uh, talk to people around you. And you kind of realize that the world's not as, as, um, as scary and as negative as the, you know, maybe the, the media or the powers that be want you to think your neighbors aren't all against you. We're not all, you know, trying to fight each other. I know there is fighting in the world, but I think if more of us got out there and, you know, talked to our neighbors and everybody around and said hello and kept our head up and smiled and everything, I think we'd realize that we all just want the same things. Um, maybe a video on how you produce your videos might be a little off the health niche, but something I'm always interested in. Yeah, that, that could be good. Be, uh, You're like, okay, so I set my camera up and then I spaz a little bit and yeah, then I get angry I tell and myself, I just hit myself and I get I don't, I never, no, never physical, but I'm just <laughs> no. like... Oh, yeah. Some, I, I swear a little bit, I get angry, and then I mess I try up, to figure it out. I mess <laughs> up my lines like a hundred times. I apologize, Chris. I'm like, oh, I'll get this next one. I promise. I'm just kidding. I'm just bugging you. That would be kind of cool. It'd be cool to go over like the gear that we use because we, I think we've like really narrowed it down into like what you need, and you don't need a lot to produce. You know what I would consider is like pretty high quality. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's always going to be higher quality videos, but a higher quality videos on. Um, you know, just, just the two of us, we don't have a team or anything like that. So I think that'd be really cool to show, um, what we have. Cause some of the stuff that we have is pretty good. Um, yeah, 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 exactly. Uh, a video with you and other big vegans, like a conversation. Yeah, I do want to do this. That would I, be fun. I struggle like asking people to do things like I, you know, I, I'm one of these people that's like, I guess, I don't know if you'd say overly considerate, but I, I don't want to like put people out and I don't want to ask people you know, and then then be like, oh, crap, now I got to commit to this, like with Derek, you know, I know they're probably not thinking that. And I know that they could just say no, if they wanted to, and everyone's got to have healthy boundaries, so they should. Uh, <laughs> but I would love to like, you know, Simon from Plant Proof, I would love to chat with, um, you know, I'd love to have more interviews with like the doctors, I'd love to have Dr. Neil Barnard on the channel. And uh, I did that interview with Dr. Clapper years ago. And then that one recently with Dr. Greger, which everyone seemed to really enjoy, uh, only had a limited time with him. But um, yeah, I would, I would really like to do that. What are some names that you would like to see me uh, collaborate with? Give me some ideas on people who I should reach out to. Uh, cage match with a carnivore. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, do you see anything? Yeah, Gregor. Um, yes, sprouting is great, but set alarms on your phone to rinse. Yeah, I just keep it beside my sink so that I see it and I make sure mm -hmm. I do it in the morning and in the evening. But Alicia Silverstone? I mean... Whoa, that would be cool because she was like my big crush when I was younger. Like, I, want, I must have watched Clueless and Excess Baggage like so many times. Uh, I wore the tape out. She was how old I am. You're I was like, like watching VHS. You're like, huh? you're just like, you're like, how are you doing yeah. today? I'm <laughs> Dude, how, how would I even reach out to her? That would be cool. Maybe I'll try. Uh, Bigger, yeah, Mike can... the Vegan. Plant Chomper. I don't know that person. Plantiful Kiki. Summer Fun Fitness would be amazing to get on the channel. Oh, yeah. Because she's really cool. And I uh, feel very inspired by her myself. Yeah, she's great. Um, Fully Rock Christina. Hmm. That oh, would be. These are big names. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know about her. I don't think I have the budget for her. <laughs> <laughs> also, I don't, spend, I don't plan on spending anything on anybody. I'm still, but I'm just saying, I don't have the budget for her. I don't really know how these things work either. Like, if. Like whenever I've been on people's channels and stuff, I never, they don't like pay me or anything like that. But I don't know if like, if you do ask for an interview, if you like offer, you know, do, do am I supposed to like pay people? Am I supposed to give them like part of the, uh, the revenue that I get from the videos? I don't know these kind of things. Maybe I'll just have to. So before we go, there's someone that's asking like a really big, intense question. Yes. Yeah. Um, PB. 
and they just said, why are you ignoring me? And it's not that we're ignoring you per se. It's just the question that you asked is really intense. And I think you should maybe, you know, work with someone. It's really they, specific. They said what plant-based foods are good for someone who has about 40 kilograms of extra fat, almost pre-diabetic and has mm -hmm. fatty liver. And what plant foods would you say avoid? Yeah. I would say like just moving towards a plant-based diet in general is going to be really, really great. And um, a whole, and mostly whole plant Like foods. a whole food plant-based diet. Yeah. And maybe if you're pre bi pre-diabetic just being more cautious around like um your fat intake and refined carbs yes, as well and it's, refined you carbs. know but fat for sure like not too much like oils and uh that sort of thing and then yeah also you know the yeah. refined uh carbohydrates for sure but we can't give you but, like a list of foods but it's the whole, like, yeah, whole, whole plant foods whole, yeah. beans lentils all those sorts of things i know yeah. they can be kind of a little you know tough on the gut at the start so maybe start with smaller amounts uh with those things but um yeah, just like working towards like a more whole food plant-based diet. If you don't know of uh, Dr. Um, Neil Barnard, Dr. Michael Greger, check out these channels because they have a ton of good information on that sort of thing. But hey, I want to say amazing for you for like wanting to to make some changes and put in the effort because it's hard to do. And uh, But once you get into it, you're going to be like, man, I wish I'd done this years ago. So yeah, just check and see, you know, what I eat and it's going to be all about matching the calories to what's uh, appropriate for you. But yeah, if you can just eat, make, cook most of your food at home and, uh, and that sort of thing, I think, I think you're going to be well on your way. Um, oh, someone said, no, you don't have to do that. You're giving the YouTuber exposure. Okay. Okay. Someone asked, Okay, maybe we'll just—I don't know. We maybe are we done? Why? Do we which have one? Any more questions. Well, someone asked, "Are there any resources that you would recommend to really nerd out on vegan, vegetarian flavor profiles and cooking methods?" Oh. Well, I mean, if you want to follow, I mean, there's chefs like Gaz Oakley. Mm -hmm. I mean, his his stuff is like this level of vegan, like cooking and stuff like that. We, but he's like basting with like yeah, oil-based sauces crazy. and stuff. Like it's like more. But if you're interested in like veg vegan flavor profiles and cooking methods, that might be someone that would be great to follow mm -hmm. you because that's like more. Um, like an upper echelon of cooking. Like we really, we really try to help uh, people like us to so like home cooks, like to eat really healthy, but want to still have like favor for stuff. But Gaz yes. is like, yo, you want to impress and your friends and like their friends and then like everyone else and want to make like a restaurant quality meal. It's like, okay, yeah, his stuff is crazy. But I also know that there are some cookbooks out there from people who have, who are chefs who have made um, like vegan chefs and they've made, uh, cookbooks kind of tailored to people who are more interested in, in kind of diving deeper into that kind of stuff. I just, mm. I haven't really read them. So I don't really remember the, the names. Um, someone said, just while you're doing that, someone said, uh, Dr. McDougal. Yeah, that would be a, that would be a cool one as well, for sure. Um, a series of interviews with long-term vegans. Why I'm still vegan after 10 years or so. Yeah. Dr. Will Bolsowitz, another great suggestion. He's the gut health MD and that he's at, yeah, he's at the top of my list as well. So I got to start doing these because I think it's a great thing. I love, I love the idea of uh, interviewing these people. I don't think I want to start like a podcast because yeah, it seems like a whole lot of <laughs> extra work. And I, I like, yeah, I just like uh, the format of like YouTube. So I think that would be really cool. Um, uh, interview the channel PB with Jay. Okay. I'll look at, check that out. Um, yeah, I can't remember what the cookbook's called, but there's some out there. There's also a really cool cookbook that I, or not a cookbook, but it's it's kind of on flavor profiles. And there's two versions, and one version that just recently came out um, is called, uh, or not called, but it's on like food pairings and what goes good. I'm just gonna grab my phone. Sweet. Um, I really want to read it because I think it'd be really, really interesting. But I uh, I have it saved on my Libby app, which I don't know if any of you use, but Libby, it's like connected to the library, but you get to like read all these books for free. It's amazing. Anyways. Um, Long format conversations are so nice to listen to on my commute, etc. Like speaking to like-minded friends. Yeah, I agree. I, I do like that sort of thing. Um, yeah. So yeah, I'll, t I'll definitely like think about doing that. I think that's, uh, that's really cool. I love, I love chatting with people and having, you know, interactions and conversations and, um, sharing it with people. So I think that's really cool. Exam room with Chuck Carroll. Yeah, Chuck, he's really good, isn't he? Uh, I'll definitely think about that. He's a really good, like, moderator, or whatever you'd say, like, interviewer. Uh, he's uh, really good at that. Can I just... Um, yeah. So one book that you could look up if you're really interested in, like, flavors and stuff like that is... It's called The Flavor Thesaurus by uh, Nikki 
Segnet. And this is actually the version that it's plant-based pairings, recipes, and um, ideas for cooks. So it's more, it's like her the plant-based version of the book. Apparently it's very uh, renowned um, and goes through different pairings of different flavors and all that kind of stuff. I don't know, I just thought it was really cool. And then there's this book that a lot of people seem interested in is anything you can cook I can cook vegan so that might be interesting too because it looks like it has like an egg on there or something which you know that's you're like replicating something which would be kind of cool to figure out right so hmm. there's also an amazing I haven't read those books though so I just don't want I don't want you guys to think oh yeah those are great recommendations oh, okay. I haven't read those I'm waiting I want to read them but I've heard them and they're they seem very interesting have you heard of um, this one called Easy Vegan Comfort Meals? It's by Sumnet Nutrition. <laughs> oh my God. Tell me more. <laughs> um, is it also, is it like $9.80 on yeah, sumnetnutrition.com? It, it is. No, but I, anyways, know, my style, the way, the thing with my cooking is I just want to make it accessible. accessible for everyone. So I'm not like trying to find like all these like rare ingredients that you might not be able to find where you live, uh, you know, just because I want it to be yeah, easy and accessible for everyone. Um Cool. All right. Well, that's probably long session with Brian Turner. Yeah, that'd be, that'd be pretty fun. Brian and I are such good buddies. He's a good dude. Um, ASMR cooking would be awesome. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> now that we have our new mic, we're like, Hello. yeah, no, I don't like that kind of ASMR. I don't like talking to people talking in my ear. Just the sounds of stuff I like, though. Um, nice. Use Tempe for the first time because of you. Thanks, Avery. That's good. Hopefully. Yeah. And you liked it. Amazing. Um, cool. So yeah, that's probably that's probably it. I think uh, big vegan mukbang. Okay, could do something like that. <laughs> I don't know, man. It's hard. It's tough coming up with uh, new content every week. Like I love, I love doing the videos. But sometimes what I made so many videos, I'll like come up with a video idea, and it's a great idea, and then it's like, then oh my god, we've done it. We've done it. <laughs> Crystal will be like, I think we've done that. And I'm like, no, it's got to be a little bit different. And then she'll like go back and then like look at the video. And she's like, no, it's exactly what you've already done. Like, <laughs> like two years ago. But it happens though. Cause we have a lot of videos. Yeah. Them, they're all great. Yeah. But we appreciate all the comments and stuff like that. Yeah. You guys are awesome. Yeah. And really, yeah. You have no idea how much I appreciate all of you and love you. I know that Ascendant Nutrition is just like such a small part of many of your lives, but it is my entire life. And I'm like, you know, just constantly thinking of different ideas and recipes to share and, and how I can bring more value to people and uh, like what the next step is in order to, to help everyone. So uh, I just want to let you know that I really appreciate it. And I'm really thankful. And I don't take this for granted at all, because I know I'm in a really special position. I'm not going to cry this time. Uh, a camping video. We're going to do that this summer, aren't we? Yes. <laughs> Crystal's not huge on camping. She loves the comfort of our own home, but uh, I think it'd be really fun. And and before the fire ban, because we get to a point in the summer where. Yeah. Like, so basically now. We yeah, go. I know. <laughs> um, but yeah. Like, yeah. And you know, I have like a, yeah, I don't know if we'll do tent camping because I have like a little SUV where I've taken the back seats out and I think I might want to just stay in there because we have like bears and cougars here. Like we have the highest concentration of cougars like ever so um it's kind of scary sleeping outside in just like a little thin you know nylon tent when you know what's creeping around behind you yeah but they'll come around they'll be like smelling our food and they're like beans yeah that's true we leave. don't cook like <laughs> meat yeah no it's true yeah yeah we just can't bring like catnip tea or something <laughs> that'd be a terrible idea oh, okay. maybe it'd be a good idea you could like throw it and then they'd like get all distracted i wonder if catnip works on cougars oh it works on all cats you think oh yeah yeah, that'd be interesting. We should bring some next time we go on a hike. Yeah, we should. <laughs> um, oh yeah, this is film the internet. It. Just lie to us. Film <laughs> it in the tent. That's sleeping in the car. Yeah, I, I just, I'm like, I'm like, oh, I'm so refreshed. Just like, oh, looking all good after like a shower. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, I thought about it. I, I thought about it. It'd be uh, hilarious to do it in like a really close park here, and we're like, oh, we're really out there, you guys. And yeah. then I'm just like at home in the in the. In the yeah, we just go home. Oh my god! Sleeping in bed, and then I just come in and like, and then I'm like, oh man, oh that felt great. If you guys like camping and uh and like that sort of thing, there's a guy who he used to live on Vancouver Island. I don't know if he still does, but his channel is called Camping with Steve, and his his channel went from like zero subscribers to like a million, like in like no time. And the dude's just a regular dude, and he just goes out and and camps in like funky um little spots. Like he'll he'll camp like behind like um like the town sign mm -hmm. and it, like, you know, he's kind of like always a little bit close and he's like an older guy, but he's like, is someone coming? Is he going to catch me? And I don't know. It's really, it's really interesting. And he's kind of like, I don't know how to describe it. Like he's kind of endearing, I guess you would say, I don't know what yeah. the word is. It's like really innocent. Um, he does stealth camping, stealth camping. That's and he what did he calls one it. that was like 
near us and like, it was amazing. We did a handful that have been like right near our house. We still drive yeah, by the spots. He, he did one that was in like a roundabout. Yes. But there was like bushes in the roundabout. He was like, I'm going to camp here. And you had to wait for like no cars to be in it. And then he was camping. It was just like a, unbelievable. I was like, what a great spot, but also hilarious. And he was like, I think people are like watching. Yeah. And, and then when, was, and then when so he goes good. into them too, he has to, he looks all casual. Like sometimes, sometimes he'll wear like a vest and make it look like he's like cleaning up trash on the side of the road. Yeah. He'll like have a yeah. little, you know, the stick thing. And then, and then he'll just like look around and be like, Ming, and then he'll like just zip into, into it. Or he'll be like, look, he'll just like, just pretend he's not doing anything. And then he's like, hey, no one's looking. And then he like ducks into this camping spot. Man, it's it's really funny. Anyways, we clearly like but, that But channel. then once you watch a few of his videos, because Derek showed me a couple of them. And I was like, wow, that's like really interesting. Now when we're driving, all I'm looking for is stealth camping spots. Like yeah. I, we like go on the side of the road and I'm like, that would be a really good spot exactly. right there. Or, or behind that sign. Or maybe that wouldn't be a good spot. You know, it really changes your perspective on where you can like camp. <laughs> so funny yeah camping with steve check him out he's a good dude uh, i'd love to have maybe i could collaborate with him one day and do a uh a do a little camp, camp and i could cook him up a little uh because he always thing. he eats like meat stuff he'll like go to the store and just get like some sausages and that's what he'll eat for dinner so i don't love that part of it but um stealth camping video too easy yeah that's maybe i still camp in my car all the time they do that everywhere in Portland, Oregon. Yeah, they, trust me, they do it here on the island too. They don't do, it's not even stealth camping. It's just like pass out on the yeah. side of the road. Yeah, camping. it's so, I, I just love the roundabout one was so good for me. It was yeah. hilarious. Uh, <laughs> more vlogs with Crystal. See, Crystal, I always say like, okay, Crystal, well, you should be in this vlog. And she's like, no one wants to see me. But it's not, the, it's not like the Simnet Nutrition and Crystal show. It's like Simnet Nutrition. Do you want me to change but the do, name? But I do like to be in them. It is fun. Oh, hair looks good, Crystal, and beard looks good, too. Thanks. I'm, nice. I'm growing my hair out. Because remember, like, a year or two ago, I cut it really short? Mm -hmm. It's grown so much. Yep. So I'm trying to grow it out, like, long, and then I should get, probably get it cut again. No, you always do this. You I know, always do I'm this. not going to cut it that short, okay? I made I made the choice last time. And it was hard to grow it out, so I'll be it, – it's fine. And thanks uh, for the beard compliment. It looks from, – from straight on, it looks pretty good. Sideways, gets a little – a little patchy. <laughs> um, but hey, working with what I got. Uh, okay. Yo, we, yeah, we really should go. I, I promise Crystal this wouldn't be much longer than an hour. And we're almost at two hours now. But I just love like hanging out. It's so fun. Um, so, yeah, I know there's some more questions coming in. But, yeah. Yeah, like, we really appreciate you guys giving us all the... All the love. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much. So I hope everyone has a good day. If you have the chance, get out there this weekend, exercise, move your body, get into some nature like we're going to go do right now. And um, yeah, have a great rest of your weekend. Thank you for all the suggestions. And uh, yeah, I'll start reaching out to some other YouTubers. I like that. I like that. It's like, what do you guys want to see from me? They're like, you talk to anybody else. Like just <laughs> bring someone else on the channel. <laughs> it's, it is like the natural evolution of things. So I think it would be really cool. Yeah. So said so this year, 1 million subs. I think Dr. B would be really cool because he's already said like many times, he's like, yo, I'll be on the channel. Yeah. So he'd be really cool. So that's more of like gut health stuff, which would be amazing. Yeah, we're so. homies. Uh, I mean, Dr. We're B. Homies. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> all right. Okay, cool. So yeah, everybody, much love. Thank you all for hanging out and watching. And we will see you soon in the next video. Bye-bye.